lost a hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. That used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. That used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Cause I'm an island boy. And I'm just trying to make it. I can't believe you got me watching that shit. Man's got on a leopard. I don't know what that is. Holmes, look, Holmes, it's leopard. <laughs> <laughs> it's leopard. <laughs> Realest podcast ever, episode 190 something, I think. Could be wrong, could be right. We're going to find out in a second. 194. It's your boy C. Diddy. I am Matt makes me sick. Dan's here somewhere. He put the camera on and disappeared. This the fuck appeared, as as Negro, they say in the Negro communities. And uh, we are here today, as we are every Monday, to talk about some things that are going on in the world at large, some things that are going on with us. More importantly, things that are happening to other people. And um, we're sitting here watching. Uh, I have I have Matt and Dan watching. Uh, oh, wow. The facts just came through. Brady is back. Brady is back. Brady is back. But Tampa? Yeah. What's wrong with Brady? I don't, Giselle don't cook. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Hated here. <laughs> Hated at home. Holy shit. The Bucks never replaced him and didn't make an offer on Deshaun Watson. They left the light on. Now Brady is back. Tom Brady comes out of retirement. Brady losing a lot of free agents. Tampa's losing out on a lot of free agents. Yeah, Brady is back. Just out of pure boredom, it was seen. I think it was Ronaldo. Ronaldo asked him yesterday, say, like, you finished? And Brady just gave a face thing. <laughs> Tom Brady, these last two months, I've realized my place is still on the field and not in the stands. That team, that time will come, but it's not now. I love my teammates and I love my supportive family. They make it all possible. I'm coming back for my 23rd season in Tampa. Unfinished business. Let's fucking go. You have seven rings. There is no unfinished I mean, business. You have seven rings. You have all the playoff records. You have a good amount of the regular season records. There is no unfinished business, Tom. You are the greatest. You are the goat and the boat. What is this unfinished business you're speaking of, my man? Probably some Instagram <laughs> in different cities. It's non more hoes. I have to have sex with. I gotta with. take them down. Like, <laughs> like, and I'm not gonna be able to do it if I'm just home chilling. Because if I just up and go to Colorado, it I looks to weird. The, I went to Target. Giselle was like, "Well, how long are you gonna be?" <laughs> this ain't it. Apparently, there's a there's an expected timer oh. on when you leave versus when you return from places. I'm not used to this. This is crazy. Well, shout out to Tom Brady, man, coming back for your 20. 20- Third season. Congrats, Tom. I mean, you know, Tom is in the space to do whatever the fuck he wants pretty much forever. Like I said, he's the greatest uh, quarterback of all time, the best quarterback of all time also, and one of the greatest, if not the greatest, football player of all time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if he just bored and just want to, you know, keep collecting 20-something million dollars a season, then, you know, do your thing. I guess the TB12 Academy isn't fully up and running yet. No. <laughs> it's like, I got, I got a little more work to do. No. Nah. A little more work to do. But, yeah, we're sitting here in, in, the, in, the, in, the, stu- in the studio uh, condo, condio, and uh, I have Matt and Dan watching uh, Steve Will Do It's <laughs> YouTube page. So, somebody earlier sent me a joint. It was, uh, um, you know, Deshaun Watson got uh, released or whatever from the Texans. He got released? I, did he get released? I think I want to say that's what happened. Jesus. Don't let me don't so, let me lie. So let me let me let me understand something real quick. And and I'll let you search for that information. If if indeed this is all caveated against if he did get released. So basically, you have this player that Oh no, he didn't get released, but the the Texans are listening to trade uh Oh, okay. Jones. So they said the four teams who are in the line for him are Cuz he has a no trade clause. Right. The sure. Panthers, the Saints, uh but it's a couple teams now. Of course, the Buccaneers were in it, but Brady's coming back or whatever. Yeah. But uh, somebody said me a joke where it was uh, it was a video of Vince McMahon. You know how people make memes and shit. Yeah, it yeah. was like um, NFL teams um looking past all the allegations to try to win a Super Bowl. So they, it was like tr- looking past allegations, trying to get a Super Bowl. These are the NFL teams who are trying to trade for Deshaun Watson. <laughs> it was Vince McMahon in the ring, like, "Come on out here and sign the paperwork, rapist." <laughs> <laughs> I 
don't know who the fuck this is. <laughs> Rapist. Come on out here and sign the paperwork. Rapist. <laughs> Good God. I was like, what? Man? <laughs> well, at least we made it past the three minute no. mark uh, for YouTube when I was. But I'm saying the R word. God, that shit I, dings the platform. They will definitely demonetize the shit out of this video. I felt out when I see that. I was like, what, yo? Yeah, so my, what I was going to say is, I just find it odd that, you know, if they had released him, it's like, yo, y'all went through all of this trouble of, you know, all this nonsense and sick Tony Busby's weird ass on him in order to create enough cloud of doubt to make him come back and play for y'all. And then you turn around and go through a whole scandalous season where he just misses the whole season. You got to pay his full salary because of it, because y'all basically told him, hey, sit this one out, champ. Um, and he was waiting for the legal system, you know, to, to, to you know, to, to adjudicate itself. And um, then you turn around and release him. That would have been very, very strange, because I would imagine that the whole point of this exercise was to get him to play, come back and play for you once, and if not, be able to get a historic haul for him. And all they did was just devalue the shit out of him and just make him pretty much worth little to nothing on the trade market, um, which, you know, if, if they're able to get five, six, seven teams involved, they'll probably be able to get a couple first-round picks, but nothing like they would have gotten if they would have just traded him from the rip two, se two seasons ago. Straight up. But yeah, Tom Brady. This shit is back. wild, man. Well, shout out to Tom Brady. Shout out to Sean Watson. Talked about it on Patreon uh, yesterday. Uh, he officially had all the grand jury has uh, declined to indict him on any uh, criminal charges related to the 10 uh, accusers that he had that were actually filing criminal cases in addition to the civil cases. So the criminal component is out the window. Mm -hmm. um, that ship has set sail. One got dismissed outright before the grand jury proceedings, and then the other nine got uh, got kicked out, you know, uh, on like Friday. And it was like, the way that the news came out was like a little weird. Like it was like, it broke on say cheese. <laughs> like the news broke on say cheese. And then like later on in the day, you see like all the mainstream outlets picking it up. And it almost was like, they were reluctant to report the shit. Mm -hmm. That part of it was like very, very weird to me. So, um, but congrats to, to Deshaun on that front. He'll be playing football this season because – this se next season, rather, because, uh, you know, anybody can sue you, whether they, you know, they right, wrong, or indifferent. Anybody can sue you. This is America. That's pretty much what people do. Uh, the main ways people, uh, you know, become successful in America are lawsuits, divorce settlements, uh, lawsuits, divorce settlements, having a baby by somebody successful, and uh, – Exploiting exploitation of your friend's success in your favor by like writing a book or a tell all a tell all or you know something of of that nature. So that's typically the the four ways Americans uh you know create a transfer of wealth being complete scumbags. Yeah, typically. pretty much. But uh, I don't know where are we starting this week. Uh, all right, real quick admin stuff. Uh, the tour everything is on sale now. First date is in three weeks. Uh, Sunday, April 3rd, we're going to be in Atlanta. Um, a lot of people are excited about the Atlanta show. Shout out to all of them. I've been talking to a bunch of my people that are in, you know, in, in the in the Atlanta area, Atlanta metro uh, area, and uh, people that are traveling from Philly to come down and all of that. So Saturday the 2nd, we're going to do a little birthday party for me somewhere. I don't know yet. We're going to figure that out. Uh, Dan, you could work on that too. Try to find us a location for Saturday night for my birthday party in Atlanta. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so for April 2nd, so we're going to do that. Then Sunday, we're going to have the show at aisle five. Um, tickets are on sale now, officialtrpe.com. Uh, tickets on sale now, officialtrpe.com. $25 general admission, $50 meet and greet. Meet and greet tickets include uh, advanced, uh, early entry, advanced seating, uh, meet and greet with me and Matt. Uh, photo and then a signed tour poster as well. So that's what everything is included. So it's like, hey, what's the difference between the fifty dollar and the twenty five dollar? That's the difference. Uh, the, the following week, uh, Sunday the tenth, uh, Sunday April tenth, we're going to be in New York City at the Knitting Factory. Get your tickets for that show. Um, you know, anybody from the New York or the Philadelphia metro is you know hour and a half drive from Philly. If you're right there in the city. Pop anywhere in uh, in New York City in the five boroughs. Pop over to Brooklyn. Come fuck with us. Uh, take a couple weeks off. Two weeks later, boom. April twenty third, Charlotte. This is gonna be my favorite show of the tour. I'm already calling it now. It's the only show we got. That's on a Saturday night, and uh, we have our after party. Everything is already laid out for Charlotte. And Charlotte is always turned. Always a good time. 
Shout out to all of the uh, the residents of Charlotte and everybody in North Carolina, South Carolina. Yeah, that's pulling some up for that show. From Charlotte. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Shout out to that. So yeah. there we have that. Three weeks off, DC. This is the one that like DC B. DC is us. So this is this is going to be a good one for us. Uh, we still finalizing who our special guests and all that is going to be. But DC B. Sunday the fifteenth. The day before, again, we're going to make it a weekend. This going to be a theme. We're making these a weekend. Dan's birthday. We're going to have Dan's birthday party Saturday the 14th. Announcement, location, all of that shit. So we all going to push down Saturday. Dan's birthday Saturday night. We're going to get trash. We're going to wake up the next day. Daytime event, 2 o'clock start for the live podcast. Um, right across the uh, state line into D- into Virginia, Arlington uh, Cinema and Draft House. That's going to be the location for the D.C. show. So shout out all my VA folks, all my DC folks, all my Maryland folks. Make sure y'all go to trpetour.eventbrite.com or go to the official TRP website, get your tickets for the DC show. The following week, tour closer, me, Matt, Big Dan, the trio known as TRPE, come together with Church for the Wild podcast, our brother, Nerd Nash, Molly, um, and everybody from Church for the Wild podcast, we're going to be closing out in Delaware. It's only right because they the, they the biggest shit in Delaware. We the biggest shit in Philly. It's only right. We come together to close out the tour in Delaware. That's going to be Sunday, May 22nd at the Queen Theater. We're going to be in the Crown, mm-hmm. um, the Crown Room within the Queen Theater for that event. So we have that going on. That's going to be the tour closer. And then more show announcements and all that for the summer. We're going to be doing like little pop-ups, maybe Houston as some people ask us about coming to Chicago. And then, of course, back to school time, we have to come to the West Coast, even if it's just for one show. We get big love in Cali. Uh, so that's going to be that. So that's pretty much everything. So that's all of the tour stuff lined up. If you're not on Patreon yet, I don't know what's wrong with you at this point. Get on the Patreon. We're putting out two episodes a week over there. All our VIP people are getting the full benefit for all of that, plus direct access to me and Matt, all of the community resources and everything that's on Patreon. And we're about to start over fresh credit series and everything like that on Patreon, which is part of what blew the Patreon up was our, us talking about credit and all of the evolving things around, you know, just credit at large. Um, and we're going to be talking about business credit this go around too. So make sure y'all get on Patreon, patreon.com slash official TRPE. Other than that, uh, again, we still got $1,000 hanging out there for Patreon when we hit 500 subscribers. Uh, we hit it a few months ago, but we didn't stay there. So people made the push to try to win the money. Then they didn't win the money, and they dipped. And it's like, yo, y'all got to stay in the community in order to win this bread. And then when we hit 1,000 subscribers in, like, 2025 or whatever, we're yeah, going to give away 5000 bucks. I retire. Yeah, <laughs> Matt retires from SEPTA. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, Dan's done selling hookah, we'll probably be able to finally give away the, that $5,000. When the hookah $5, craze is over. <laughs> right? We'll yeah. be able to give away that $5,000. Yeah. Uh, and then, oh, and I got a, and I still got my own personal $1,000 out there for YouTube. Oh, YouTube? We hit 10,000 oh, yeah, yeah, subscribers yeah. on YouTube. I'm giving away $1,000 on the spot. No questions asked. It's PayPal, coming Venmo. Your, it's coming out, your coming out of my end. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we got all of that right. going on. So that's all the administrative stuff. Matter of fact, I'm going to add a hookah in with the money. All right, so 1000 and a hookah kit. In a hookah kit. In a hookah kit. Okay, you know now what, what is a hookah kit? All right, so you so so you got the the karate championship hookah. Right, that's right. You, you know what I'm saying? That's right. right. <laughs> yeah, you, right. Got, you got the got the karate championship hookah. Then you get a box of coals. Okay. Then you get well, how many flavors? Dan, you get two flavors. Yeah, we three, give them two flavors. You give them two flavors and a bag of tips. That's the hookah kit complete. Okay. So you ain't got to do so nothing. So you get a hose. Yeah, you get the hose they with come it. with the hose. Yeah, come okay. with yeah the 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 hookah, the hookah comes with the hose. Okay. Okay. And then the hookah comes with the hose. You know, one thing I learned. <laughs> More hose come with the hookah. I, I, I learned in Charlotte, word, 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 word to Jules. Do you know you have to use like hookah coals, like specific hookah mm-hmm. coals? Because yeah, you bought, can't use charcoal. He bought a box of coals. Like a, it's a little box. That shit was like, how much is a box of coals? I mean, at the very fifteen dollars. Yeah, it was like twenty five dollars though yeah. for this little joint. I was yeah, like, down, I man. was like, man, they got a bag of Kingsford out front of the acne. <laughs> Four ninety nine. Yeah, he was like, man, you can't use that Some shit. Some quick lights. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't know you had to use specific coals. Yeah, that shit says the whole industry. He was like, man, you'll blow your fucking lungs up. You (laughs) you try to smoke with a Kingsford. Yeah, the the hookah coals that me and Dan like is the coconut drones. Nice and smooth. They burn even pretty much all the way around. They ash in a, in a, eco friendly uh, manner. The, the hook, the coconut hookah coals is the best joints. Listen, go get some of them, uh, 
the quick lights. I mean, not the quick. The, the, the kings for you don't even need the lighter fluid. <laughs> Yeah, just look yeah. at them. Just look at them. And they just, <laughs> they you can it. open the, the sun out, nigga. This shit is lit. Yeah, hey, I, this is above 55. Them yeah, throw this light on me. You scratch that shit on the sidewalk. You could take them Kingford Jones that already got the lighter fluid in it. You could dump the grill out and come back out the next morning. It's still orange on the motherfucking ground. Like, them Jones still kind of lit. Like... Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, they really marinated them jaws. Yeah, them Kingsford Jones ain't no joke. But he was like, no, nah, you can't use grill coals, nigga. You got to use fucking specific <laughs> specific coals for this. Big shit. ass coals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sitting on top of this goddamn. Because you, know you know they got coal warmers. Like yeah. little, little, like. Uh, little hot plate. Little, like, uh, I guess like slave stoves. Yeah, like hot little, plate. Yeah, little, <laughs> little jaws. Little slave stoves. Little slave stove with the with the yeah, that's the college dorm job. Yeah, yeah. Y'all see my cousin uh cook uh cook seven grams on one of them joints before <laughs> on the floor. So when young scooter said I could I could cook the dough with no stove pot on the floor, I was like, damn. Don't ask me where I was at. Cousin I, legend. <laughs> don't ask me where I was at. I seen a bitch like hookah coals on an electric stove. Like the the just the stove. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was I thought that was like I thought that was like uh, magic. No, I, fucked up my, I fucked up my stove top, but I didn't. listen. I thought that was like magic <laughs> when I was seeing it. I was like, "What the every, fuck?" Every stove top in the city is fucked up. Oh, yeah, okay. that, that, so that's, that, normal. Okay. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah, that, that convection ain't no joke. That shit get hot, hot. Okay. <laughs> that okay. shit get hot, hot. Yeah, I thought that was some more other shit. No, yeah. that's normal. That's I seen normal. that we was at like a little kickback, and she they they didn't have like apparently motherfuckers had no lighters. They said, "Oh, wait, I'm gonna do it on the stove." <laughs> And she lit the shit, got red and the coal. She was holding it on the angle, the little corner court. I was like, oh shit, this bitch is a sorcerer. <laughs> I ain't know what was going on. Man, that's crazy. But yeah, all right, we'll throw in a hookah kit. Yeah, st- stack with the hookah kit for the 10th K on uh, YouTube, man. Uh, shout out to Crip Mac. He just got out of jail. Uh, shout, okay. shout out to Crip Mac. They freed the loc. Great man. Great man. Great man. Shout out Crip One Day Mac. Uh, Lupita and everybody, you know, over there on 55th Street. Yeah. Uh, Crip Max, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Crip Shout out to Crip Max. Crip He's a great man. Great man. You know what I'm saying? Just hit 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. One thing that annoyed me with our Crip Mac interview was, like, the comments. People like, oh, they laughing at him. And it's just like, no, 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 no. We were laughing because this is hilarious. Crip. But understand, we talk to this nigga a lot. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, he really, really, like, fucked with us going forward. Like, we had a conversation in the parking lot before we even recorded. Like, just on some, like, just... Yeah. He was going to put Matt on the set. He was going to put me on. <laughs> <laughs> I said, damn, you a big motherfucker. You want to go in the alley right Yo. quick? <laughs> like, no, I don't, Mr. Mac. I'm, I'm, I'm here working. But even still, with the weird comments and all of that, overwhelming positivity oh, yeah, yeah, overall. Yeah, yeah. We got like a 97% like ratio on the video. Yeah. Like, shit went crazy. We just hit 45,000 views the other day. So, shout out to everybody out there. And a lot of people subscribe to the channel, stuck around, be watching the, you know, the, 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 the shows and all of that. So, shout out to everybody that, you know, discovered TRPE from the Crip Mac interview. We definitely going to do a part two soon. Yeah, we got to get him out We got to get him out here. Right. We got to take Crip Mac to 55th Street yeah, out here. Yeah, we got to take him around the city. Take him to some restaurants. Let him rumble top Lil on the five. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever win get to put the other person on they yeah. on they set. <laughs> Crip Mac a solid motherfucker. I give him that. Yeah, you know for saying? sure. Definitely a solid ass nigga. Yo, um, that Crip Mac driving video was making his rounds again oh on the internet. <laughs> What you say? Uh, did you ever get your license? It's taking some time. It's taking some time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're working on it. <laughs> working out some things. That's funny as shit. <laughs> But uh, anything else administratively? No, nah, nothing else administratively, man. That's pretty much everything. Uh, we just going to jump into these topics. It's a lot going on. Even with all of the Patreon content we cut this weekend, it's still way more going on that we held for this shit. So do you want to get personal first? Like talk about our some shit we got going on. What do we have going on? Nigga, you went to Memphis. Oh, so we had some shit. I was about to say, you want to talk about stuff that we got, we meaning you, oh, okay. this week go, got going Yeah, we on. can do the Memphis recap. Um, okay. Or you want to get into some of these other hot topics. No, let's say that, because that's, that's we can go say that for down that. a rabbit All right, hole. cool. Yeah. So, uh, big topic in urban culture music right now, Lil Durk's album is out. I was saying let's do the Memphis shit and save that. Oh, save what? The top, like the rest of the topics. Oh, do your thing. I mean, I don't, but what, you said save it. <laughs> like, no, no, I was like, get that out the way. That way oh, we okay. can go down the rabbit hole of all the extra shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Matt takes Memphis. Uh, Take one. Yeah. Uh, 
You know how people be like, uh, Memphis doesn't owe me anything. They owe me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they owe me a little bit. Um, all right, let's start with this. Have you have you ever gone to the middle of America? Yes, yeah, several times. Tennessee, I've, Oklahoma. Been to St. Louis about six times. Okay, that's uh, Missouri. Yeah, I've been to St. Louis. I've been to Claymont, Missouri also, okay. which is the suburb of St. Louis. Yeah. Um, where else have I been in the Midwest? Um, no, that's it. Okay. That's it. All right. <laughs> that's so for all the people who have never traveled to the Midwest, and when I say like the mid, well, not even. And I've been to Pittsburgh too. That's like the beginning of the Midwest. That shit sucks. Ironically, it is, yes. <laughs> it sucks. When you start going to these places like Tennessee, Alabama, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Flyover states. Yeah. These places really don't have like a, a, a what do you what do you what do you want to call Philadelphia, Jersey, Miami? Not Jersey, Philadelphia, well, New no York, Metropolis. Miami. There's no metropolis. Bingo. There's no there there's no metropolis in in and around this this area. Yeah, the the way we uh like view and interact with our cities and the way that they look and all of that, we almost take it for granted because anywhere on the eastern seaboard that you go, the aesthetic is similar or exactly the same. And it starts at the very beginning of the trip. When you go to Miami, when you go to LA, when you go to Atlanta, when you go to Vegas, when you go to Houston, when you go to New York, when you go to San Francisco, when you go to Chicago, you go to Charlotte, you go to all these different places, you go and you book a flight and you literally, if you right now go on US Airways, Delta, whatever the fuck you like to fly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if US Airways is still a fucking airline. I think it's American, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, definitely got bored by American. I was about to say TWA. Like, <laughs> if you go on any of these websites and you look at flights, you know what you see when you look at Miami and LA? You see 40 fucking flights a day. Yeah. They got straight shots. They got layovers. You got Jones. And, you know, people like that shit because like, I, I saw one flight the other day where it was like, you can lay over in Miami for 10 hours. And then people like that shit. Yeah. It's like, yo, it's two trips in one. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you go to Memphis, there are literally five flights yeah. a day to Memphis, right? Yeah, you miss you, you miss your six a.m. flight. The next one is at noon. <laughs> if if <laughs> like an if bet. The craziest part about this shit is there are only two straight shot flights. Everything else is a layer. Is a connector. Everything is a connector. So I don't want connectors. So we Fuck have no. to do straight flights. The flights that go from Philly to Memphis. You know how you go get on the plane? Like, remember I did the joint with the live flats that had the beds, mm -hmm. and everybody's like, what the fuck plane are you on? I'm like, yeah, I'm on a 777 or a 787. These are like, like Drake says, 767. Shit got double bedroom. Like, this shit is humongous. When you go to Memphis, they fly CRJ 700s. These are like the little bitch ass planes. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? That's ba So basically, that's like the equivalent of uh, like the planes they like fly out of like Allentown Airport. Right. And these like little right. small. Right. Uh, secondary market hubs and shit. Like, like that. the first class on the plane is two seats and then one seat. Oh, damn. It's like the trolley. No, that's like the that's the same plane I came back from the Bahamas on. Yeah, it's like that. The, my, so, my, cause my Bahamas flight coming back, I had a, cause I missed my flight thanks to fucking customs. My Bahamas flight coming back, I had a connector that dropped me in Miami. Bruh. We took the little tiny Bruh. plane. Bruh. Listen. <laughs> We want to go to Memphis. We're going to Memphis, going to the game, going to eat some barbecue. I like flying first class. That's just my twist. Yeah. I like it. It's my thing. I'm I'm comfortable. I they don't have a first class seat going to Memphis for like three years. Like <laughs> not exaggerating. It's like, the same motherfucking barbecue baron <laughs> that keep buying up all the first class seats <laughs> to every fucking flight. Some Apple Redwood <laughs> <laughs> fucking Baron is buying all the first class seats down there. So Lee is like, oh, well, did, is it going to kill you to sit in coach? And I'm like, yes. Yes, you know what mentally. I'm first. Yes. She's like, it's not going to be that bad. The flight is only an hour and 50 minutes. It's not that fucking bad. But literally, there are the only joint you can get a first class seat on is to basically catch a flight from here to like Dallas or here to uh, Indiana and then from there to Memphis. That fucking stinks. And the, the layovers is all ridiculous. So I'm just like, fuck it, whatever. We booked the flight. We sitting in the in coach. And she like, it ain't going to be that fucking bad. Oh, my fucking God. That's <laughs> exactly what I said when I got on there. 
It's so fucking tight. Mind you, you're not on a big plane in yeah, coach. You're on a small plane. You're on a with. little plane in coach. The back row, I swear to God, like row 29, I swear to God, the seats, the, the seats fold down from the wall. I'm like, are we going skydiving? What yeah, the this fuck? Yeah, this a fucking, uh, you know, one of them old school beds. Dog. Oh, <laughs> <that's laughs> big like hopper. Yo. <laughs> Stash the bed in the wall. Dog, dog. <laughs> it was so fucking tight. And then when you sit, you 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 know, you sit first class. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it it don't really be babies in first class. And when they do, they be good. Right. Like, these babies nice are bad. Nice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these untrained babies. <laughs> Yo, it was this lady. She had like two babies, yo, and then had like two other kids. And the the young boy is like, he's sitting in the seat, but he not in the seat. He's sideways, so his legs are in the aisle. Yeah. And he's like banging his legs on the little wall, John. And I'm just looking at him like, fucking stop, you little, <laughs> little bastard. Bastard. stop. What the fuck? Like, it it just it, it was. It, it was it was it was a doozy flying down there in the yeah. in the, in the uh, standard accommodations. You know what I'm saying? So you get there, and then when you get, you've never been to the Memphis airport. No. Like, you know how you in Philadelphia airport and Miami airport, and it's like shopping. It's like, like it's an airport. It's an airport. It's, so it's, it's commerce rest, going it's on. It's restaurants. Yeah. It's, you know, you can go buy travel. You can go buy fucking suitcases and every fucking thing else. You get to the Memphis airport, bro, it's literally like a hot dog stand, a pizza joint, and... You want some Grizzlies merchandise? <laughs> like, that's really it. It's nothing in this joint. You know what I'm saying? So we get out. We get, we we call an Uber. Uber XL is going to take 38 minutes. I'm like, why? Because it's four in a whole city. Because it's only eight <laughs> Ubers. <laughs> we only job. got 12 Ubers, period. And Bruh. then you want to be on some fancy shit. Bruh. Gas is up. Ain't no Suburbans around. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Uber XL say 38 minutes. We go to Lyft, uh... I think it's Lyft Black or, or Uber Black was 38 Black minutes. Lyft XL say it's going to be 44 minutes. It said not many available, if any. It say that on the jump. So then we look at the preferred Like, lift. you know you in Memphis, right? <laughs> preferred Lyft. Preferred Lyft is literally 29 minutes or whatever. I'm like, what the fuck? Get you a hot dog. And wait, Go get you a Frank, <laughs> nigga, and we'll pull up. So she like, fuck it. I just want to get to the hotel. Like, I'm just going to get the regular lift. I'm like, all right. She click it. She like, it say it be here in four minutes. It's connecting now. Connecting. And she just looked at me. I'm like, how bad is it? She was like, Chevy Cobalt. I'm like, oh, my <laughs> fucking God. So then the Cobalt, I see it coming around the joint. It's a red Cobalt. And as it's coming close, I'm like, oh, this can't be it. I'm looking past That's it. She, and she was like, what you mean? I'm like. This joint looks really old. And she looked, she was like, oh, yeah, it's an 08. I'm like, Jesus oh. Christ. Main man pulled up in the 08 Cobalt. It's stinking this car. Of course it, it does. <laughs> I Listen, mean, the God. Chevy, when I worked in rental, at, in the rental branches, the Chevy Cobalt was my most hated car because they had the cheapest fucking um, cloth material oh, seats my God. and any scent or food or whatever you God. had in the car this would stick can't right in the seat. You oh. can't get it out. He, we pull up, he pull up, he get out the joint, he got on flip flops, no socks, toes out, you know what I'm saying? Country and shit. Toes out, holes out. Dog, <laughs> he had on a change clothes, Scully. I'm like, oh, this is crazy down here already. <laughs> he get out, come around the back, he like, oh, y'all wanna put y'all shit in the trunk? I'm like, this suitcase ain't gonna fit in the cobalt with three humans, you know what I'm saying? He opened the trunk, it's a half a platter, in there, his trees. Like a half a pound. He's grabbing the boots. Like, oh, you can slide your Jones. I'm, I'm going to put these up front. I'm going to sit the boots up front. I'm like, yeah, this is ghetto and shit. So now, <laughs> we in this stinky ass cobalt riding through Memphis. I'm like, dog, we look like hard out here for a pimp going to the fucking airport. Got your head out the window dog. like Ace's sword. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? So we look, what's the nicest hotel? Near Beale Street, yeah. we see the Westin. It's five, four and a half stars, and it's across street from the FedEx Forum. I'm like, okay, bet the West End. You know what I'm saying? I've heard rappers <laughs> mention the Westin. Cool. We get there. The lobby was nice. The lobby was all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, so it's like a Sinesta. The lobby be nice. The lobby, the room yeah. Is trash. Sinesta gets you, you like, Yo, the Sinesta oh. get you every time. Glo global Euro Sinesta. <laughs> the lobby be beautiful. You get to the room, this shit is a holiday Dog. in. 
<laughs> the lobby was so fly. I had the bar. They had the grand piano. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, it's nice as shit in this junk. We get our shit. Whoop de whoop. We like, yo, is any upgrades available? He was like, um, not tonight. We got a very, very large party coming in. So I'm like, what the fuck large party is coming to fucking Memphis? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he was like, I can't really disclose, but we like... All the upgraded rooms is, is just not popping for you right now. And I'm like, whatever. I ain't tripping off of it. Cool. He give us our drone. We get to the room. I open the door and I'm just like, oh, man, dude, this is some Jilligan's Island. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> the room was, it was just a basic room. Like, you know, the way yeah. they pumped it in the drone was like five star. Mini King Deluxe and, Supreme. And it was literally a stand up shower. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like just a shower. Like, yeah. not like. The whole, like, I mean, like a single stall shower. Um, the toilet was pretty, it was just a regular ass room. You know what I'm saying? So we get in, we settle in, whatever, whatever. We kind of tired. We chill for a second. Then we like, fuck it. Let's get up. Let's go get some barbecue cracking. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we come down. When we get to the lobby, I see the buses. I see all the shit. CJ McCullum walked past me. So I'm just like, the Pelicans are staying Dude, in this the large part, right? The Pelicans so that's why I'm like, part. oh, that's why they ain't gonna give us an upgraded room because all these motherfuckers. I see Brandon Ingram, I see fucking De Devontae Graham. I'm like, oh shit, the Pelicans are staying in the show. So then I'm just like, I'm saying it to myself, like standing over there, but motherfuckers can hear me, like at the kiosk where they and they all got on Pelicans, uh, like warm ups, and mm -hmm. you can tell they with the staff or whatever. So I'm like. Why are the Pelicans staying here? And the boy looked over and was like, shit, this is the best place to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, right, right, right. <laughs> I was like, right, right, right. <laughs> right. I can't imagine this much better shit out here than this. You, know like, nigga, you go four blocks in any direction. Mm -hmm. This shit turned into the Han video. We went to BB King's the uh, first night for dinner. Um, The food was really good. Really, really good. BB King's restaurant. It's like one of the staples on Bill Street. I am not a blues live performer person. Right. Like, remember Kanye Life of Pablo? That song where it's like, doom, 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 doom. And the girl is like, it's like shit like that. Yeah. And I'm just like, y'all honestly can shut the fuck up <laughs> and just let me eat my ribs. The music was so loud in the band. They're playing. Put on some Yo Gotti. They're, they're playing drums and the, the xylophone and all of that. The, what's the little triangle? The Somebody had a triangle. Like It was crazy. I, I'm just not really into blues music. So the music was a bit annoying. But the food was really good. Bill Street was fun as shit. I went to a record store, bought a lot of... I bought like a bunch of Kanye and Drake mixtapes that I've never seen on vinyl. I went and looked. Kanye Freshman Adjustment 1 and 2 is selling for $200 on eBay. Damn. I got both of them for $40 a piece. Drake Room for Improvement isn't even a, it, it, it straight, they pulled it off of the market on vinyl. Like yeah. this shit is just not available. And I got Semester Overseas. I've never seen that on vinyl. I got Kanye, I'm good. That shit on eBay right now is $300. I got it for 40 bucks. Oh, so yeah, I bought like, I bought like $300 worth of records that are selling right now for like 700 altogether. Yeah. And then one record is just not even available. The guy at the record store, literally, it's him and his mom's record store. I, He was like, you buying all of this? And then we bought like souvenirs and t-shirts. All together, we spent like $450. He was like, we can close the gate. Right, we, we can close for the rest of the month. We can get out of here for that. <laughs> the rent here ain't nothing but $134. <laughs> He was, his mom was trying to give us her plate. She said, you want the rest of this food? I was like, no, we going to eat, man. <laughs> they like we get we about to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> These city slickers come through yeah. here. <laughs> Y'all must be I must be I want some oil money or something. <laughs> they was cool as shit. Shout out to them at Memphis Music, man. But uh we 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 went to BB King's, went to Memphis Music, all that shit. We rode the trolley, all that bullshit. It was cool. First night was was pretty chill. The second day, we actually got to go around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to Graceland, right? <laughs> I didn't know that niggas hate Elvis the way they hate. Like, up here, you know how we make jokes about yeah. Elvis? No, down there is baked in. Yeah. It's encrusted. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's in the fabric what of the, the city. Uh, it's stuffed crust. <laughs> like, that shit is in there. They hate this motherfucker. I come down to the front desk. I'm like... 
the boy like, yo, how you feeling, man? How you, you enjoying your stay? Y'all from Philly, right? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, how you feeling, man? I was like, oh, man, it's cool. Nice little dope little city. I like it. We went to Bill Street last night. That was funny. Oh, yeah, Bill Street. It's like, it's like y'all, uh, what boys the men talked about? South Street. I'm like, damn, boy, that was 92. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn. You haven't heard any other Philadelphia communication <laughs> in 30 nigga, years. Nigga born up Motown <laughs> Philly out there. <laughs> hey. But he's like, that's like y'all South Street. I'm like, yeah, essentially that's what it is. But our South Street is like really burnt out. Like, you know, ain't yeah. no older people going to South, South Street, Street to, have, cooked. to have dinner. South Street is more so get your issue after 10 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, he was like, so what y'all got on the dock for the day? I was like, uh, I think we going to go to Graceland. It got so quiet. He was like, and just walked the <laughs> fuck off. I'm like, damn. He was like, yeah, man, we don't, we don't go to Graceland, dog. And I'm like. I mean, you know, like it's it's, it's Graceland. Like it's a it's, monument. It's, it's a the, national monument. I'm like, I looked online. It said that the the Graceland is the second most visited place in America. He was like, they also told you to keep your mask on, didn't they? And I'm not gonna fucking mask. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got a point. Yeah, you got a point. <laughs> so we called an Uber driver. The Uber driver pull up. Big black boy, husky black boy. You know what I'm saying? So we get in the car. This car doesn't stink. You know what I'm saying? But okay. it is old. But we get in the car, whatever, whatever. So he put the address in. He was like, oh, man, y'all going to Graceland? And I was like, yeah, we want to see. He was like, man, don't know niggas go to Graceland. He's like, Elvis stole everything from niggas, man. And I'm like, he did, but he built a beautiful mansion. <laughs> after, he, after he stole it. I want to see the shit. And I felt so, like, just... I ain't going to... Like, remember when Carlton couldn't get into the fraternity? Yeah. That was how I felt in the back of the Uber. And it was just eating with me. So when we pulled up to Graceland, I got out, and he was, like, shaking his head. He was just like... Shh. And I was just like, just let me get a picture. And you can drop us back. <laughs> you got judged Yo, the nigga, whole way. This him and Lee guilty me of the not going into Graceland. Yeah, you got, you got judged from inception to execution. So I got back in the dream. He's like, yeah, man, why don't you just go to the zoo? <laughs> All right, fuck it. So then we get the zoo videos. Yeah. So fuck it. We go into the zoo. So we went to the zoo. The zoo was cool. It was actually pretty fun, like, seeing the shit. Animals was pretty interactive. That shit was funny as hell at the end when you was walking around. Oh, the cheetah dog. <laughs> Listen. He was like, he could. No. He could, I know physics. He the could get fence, out of there. The fence was as high as that counter. I'm like, why the fuck is the cheetah fence that low, yo? And they like, oh no, they're they're trained and they know they know better. I'm like, no, the f it's an animal. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? They know about? better till they don't. Dog. But uh, it was cool. It was fun. Like I said, we uh, I will say this again: the barbecue shit the, in Memphis is they have a barbecue hut at the zoo. Oh, the, so the barbecue is serious. Do you know what it's called? Barbazoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of it. <laughs> They got a fucking barbecue <laughs> at the zoo. Barbazoo. It's called Barbazoo. <laughs> and we walked out the elephant joint, and I'm like, am I smelling shit or barbecue? <laughs> Lee was like, both. And it's so weird because it smells good, but it stinks. <laughs> Yo. It's barbecue. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Dog. Jeez, Louise. Dog. It was crazy just how the barbecue shit is just in it. Like you said, it's encrusted. It's in the crust yeah. of what these people do down here. So all the gas stations, all the fucking sneaker stores, everywhere has barbecue. <laughs> Swear to God. And like I said on the picture, I'm like, people down there, it's like, oh, you want some good food? Go down there to that, see that shack that look like it's closed? It ain't closed. You just walk in. They got like, and it's just like, huh? After Leroy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the best food you're going to get in Memphis don't come on a plate. It come in, you know, the little picnic cardboard Oh, yeah, the little, uh, the the, little red and white junk. The, it almost looked like the, the hat, <laughs> yeah. Peter Pan hat. <laughs> That's the best food you're going to get down that motherfucker. So we went to the zoo, went to Graceland, well, a little bit, and then... <laughs> fake went to Graceland. Fake went to Graceland. We made our way back to the hotel. We wanted to go to the Civil Rights Museum Tuesday, but it's closed on Tuesdays. Okay. So I was upset about that. So... We went back, got ready for the game. Now, of course, the game is right across the fucking street, so you didn't have to really do anything for that. All you had to do was yeah. walk over there. And I walk in. I'm going to get my Vax card. The girl's like, you're holding up my line, sir. What's going on? I'm like, oh, you only see my card? She was like, what card? I'm like, my Vax card. She was like, where are you from? I was like, Philly. She was like, mm, y'all late. Go ahead. I was <laughs> like, oh, okay, yeah, that's right. No mask, no Vax. I didn't show none of that shit. You ain't need a mask the whole time to use that. Why, why are you trying to show me this, sir? You don't need none of that shit down there. So we go to the game. The game was cool. Game was fun. We sat on the wood. Um, our row was pretty cool. 
I, I don't know if it was he had to be affiliated with Gotti or something because the nigga just had on so much jewelry. It was just unbelievable. His chick was with him. She had a bunch. They was cool as shit. They had their kids with him. Tell you how Bo young boy slid in on Lee. You know the shirts. You know how sh how serious the shirts get yeah. when you sitting down. And Lee was like, I want a shirt. We go to all these games. I never get a shirt. And the security boy leaned though. He was like, look, I'm going to let you all know a secret. When you sit on the, the wood, they look at you like you're a rich piece of shit. They ain't giving you shit. They ain't giving you no motherfucking <laughs> shirt. The only way you get a shirt down here is if you're a kid. You know what I'm saying? So the boy with all the ice, his son had a shirt. Yeah. So his son came around, a little light skinned young boy. You can tell he a little player. He like nine <laughs> years old. Because he had a little ice on, a little Gucci. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the kids got Gucci shit on. Yeah. He comes around the dad. He was like, here you go, miss. You can have my shirt. So I'm like, the fuck is this about? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to mack on my, on my so, lady. So he was like, she was like, oh, no, baby, don't. It, it, you, you enjoy it. You a kid. Yeah, no. I'm, I was more so being funny, like playing around. You enjoy your shirt. He was like, we got season tickets. I got like six. I, yeah, I come here all the time. I'm a, <laughs> she I'm was a like, regular. you serious? The dad was like, yeah, we got, I got so many of them shirts. You, he, you can have it. She, he, he gave her the shirt. She was like, he was like, oh, I like your smile. I'm like, all right, we got to get this fucking young boy out of here. <laughs> Get him his fucking chest. Get him out of here. He was cool though. Shout out Cornelius. That was his name. <laughs> little baby line pusher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little, little Cornelius gave her the shirt. That was cool. Uh, we left from the game with the Jerry the King Lawler's restaurant on Bill Street. That was cool. It was fun. Now, I will say this. In the midst of all of this, all we're eating is barbecue and barbecue. That's and like brisket. me in Jamaica. You know what I ate every day? Jerk chicken. That, that, listen. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Jerk and I'm chicken. Just, <laughs> and I'm to the script. I ain't going to mention And, 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 and I, I got some of them jerk chicken and egg whites. <laughs> we, we, went to the restaurant chicken, get, we went to the restaurant the night after the, the game. She got, I think she got like a half slab and brisket. And the, the girl was like, what do you want? I was like, can I get the catfish nuggets? And she was like, really? And I was like, and, and, a, and a quarter slab. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you got to eat the shit down there. And I realized I hit rock bottom. The next morning, we went to Arcade, which is the oldest diner in Memphis. Mm -hmm. Right? It's called Arcade. It's right down the street from the hotel or whatever. I Everything had, is in a four-block radius. And you ain't going past that <laughs> unless you're going to Graceland. <laughs> Niggas ain't allowed to go there. Um, you, I had a pulled pork omelet. The next morning, and that's when I, I, I realized it was like I I'm have, doing too much. I've hit rock bottom. I, 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 I have remember a uh, league of their own. I have seen enough to know that I have seen too much. <laughs> I've really hit rock bottom. I mean, you know, and the, and the crazy part was I had a pulled pork omelet and I had deep fried French toast, and I'm just like, this is cardiac arrest. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And. We got uh, in the restaurant. You need like, a life alert. <laughs> it, no, I'm not joking. In the restaurant, I got up and went to take a smash in the restaurant. And I came out the bathroom and Lee was like, yo, you was gone for so long. I'm like, you all right? I was like, you're lucky I didn't die in that fucking bathroom. You're lucky my heart didn't stop. Why the fuck would you let me order deep fried French toast? <laughs> deep fried. Like it's they deep fried French toast at this joint. Like they dip the fucking chala bread in the batter <laughs> and then drop it in a deep oh, fryer. No. Oh no, bruh! Absolutely not. And the, and the, mind you, the meal I got had the pulled pork omelet, grits, two pieces of deep fried French toast, one pancake, two pieces. So of wait, bacon. this wasn't an add on. This no, was, this, this is the meal. <laughs> this comes standard. <laughs> this, is, this is this is Wednesday morning. <laughs> this shit. I, is. I want. Uh, I need the census to go and take note of everybody in Memphis BMI. Listen, I'm sure everybody's about to die. Omelet with your choice of pulled pork or brisket, grits, two pieces of bacon, two pieces of sausage. Two pieces of deep fried French toast, one pancake, and for two extra dollars, you can get a electric mimosa, which is a mimosa. It's orange juice, champagne, and Red Bull. So I drunk that. <laughs> <laughs> so boom, I'm on cloud nine. <laughs> you ain't seen my video? I was sweating walking into this. So <laughs> right, you see? I'm like, yo, I'm charged up, my stomach bullet. <laughs> An electric mimosa. Dog. I took like nine shits at the Civil Rights Museum. Lee was like, they gonna think you about to blow something up. You keep walking to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, dog. I was, they, I was, I was, I was torn apart when we got oh, there. Oh god. So we leave from arcade. You get to the Civil Rights Museum, right? That was where we went because it's Wednesday morning before we was leaving. It was like, yo, we got you, you in Memphis. You got to go to the Civil Rights Museum. Yeah. It's a rite of passage. Apparently, Graceland comes way later in the joint. You know what I'm saying? You go to the Civil Rights Museum, and again, I said it on Patreon. The dynamic of a city where you have the second most visited monument in the country, 
which is Elvis's Graceland, which niggas absolutely hate. And then seven blocks over, you have where Martin Luther King was killed right. and the National Civil Rights Museum. Do you know that the hotel is the Lorraine Motel that we, where he got killed at? That hotel was in foreclosure and a group of nonprofit workers had to like come in and save it from getting like destroyed. Damn. <clears throat> and when they did that, they got it preserved as a national landmark and then they got the funding to build the museum around the motel. Got it. But that shit was almost knocked down. So that shit like, was almost a piggly wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> Because hey, it's Memphis. Yeah, oh yeah. There ain't no food lines down this motherfucker. Yeah, I know. Not trying to be funny. The whole time we was there, I didn't see a supermarket. You know what I saw? Fred's groceries. Oh, damn. Like the mom and pop. Yeah. Little, little, little cousins would make a killing down that Chad and Dan's groceries. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is down there. Ain't no Acme, Super Fresh, AMP, none of that shit. Ain't even a path mark down this motherfucker. Hey. Yeah, eight brothers are killing. Yeah, yeah. So you get to the Civil Rights Museum, like I said. First, you outside, you see where Martin Luther King was killed. You know, room three hundred six. You know what I'm saying? They got his coops still sitting outside. Martin, he was sliding on them big ass coops, nice Jones. And I like Lee was like, "Why is that what you thinking right now?" I'm like, "I'm just saying." Like you pull up, man was riding clean. Man was riding clean. You know what I'm saying? He has seventy six O's. Like I see why now. He was riding clean. He talk good. And he was, was sliding. In, in, in 68 with this? This is clean now. <laughs> like in 68 with this? So you get into the museum and it's 21 exhibits, right? And it's basically, it's it's a walkthrough. It's not like, you know, like you go to like the art museum, you can kind of yeah. go wherever you want. You kind of got to walk through one exhibit to get to the next. So it starts with, think about where black people started in this country, slavery. Yeah. And I'm talking about like 10 minutes into the exhibit, you like, I'm socking one of these white people on this John today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, which one? Pick one. Because it, it's, it's <laughs> a lot. It's, it's, it's emotionally a lot. So you get done with the slavery, John, then you go into a movie, like a little movie theater, right? Yeah. Then they show you a movie on how slavery ended, but then it became Jim Crow and segregation. Then you go out into the Jim Crow segregation exhibit. Then you go into, you know, the Freedom Riders and then the marches and then you go into the, the, the fair working rights. Then they got a whole exhibit on the diners, like the where niggas was getting beat up for sit-ins at the diners. You just like, yo, white folks was really wilding out over, you know, corned beef. You know, yeah. like, yo, you nigga in here trying to order a motherfucker. Nigga trying to order a Reuben. Nigga trying to order a Reuben. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to kill it. Like, that shit is a lot to take in, yo. And you know one thing I thought was interesting? You know Hosea Williams is Portia Williams' like grandfather? I had no idea. He was marching with, what's the one that just passed away? Oh, uh, uh, the short one. The guy from Atlanta. Right. Yeah. But he was marching with him, and I, I'm the, the girl was like, yeah, you know, that's uh, Portia from Real Housewives or whatever. That's her grandfather. And I'm just like, and they show him marching with all these black women and men from the 60s. And I'm like, look at the people he was marching for, and look at what his grand... Like, I, was, has I was just like, yo, that's crazy yeah, and An shit. adulterous maniac. Uh, straight maniac. And then you 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 go through all the exhibits, whatever. And by the time you get done with it, they like, so do you want to go see where the bullet actually was fired from across the street? And you like, I, I don't need any of yeah, that. No. Yeah, I, I don't need it. I don't need the sniper vision. Yeah, I don't need any of that. And y'all should delete that from the door. Yeah, yeah. But uh, all in all, the Civil Rights Museum was very, very good. It's Like I said, it's a very... It puts you in a weird space. Oh, those you remember the Blacks and Wax Museum, and mm -hmm. I don't know if that's still there in like Baltimore or whatever. I think it's Baltimore, DC, one of those. I know I've been there. Like all of those exhibits that go through Black history, it's a tough like ride to go. Yeah. Like, and you know, because again, we we you know Jay Z got the the the, the Tiffany Patek, right. so we think everything has just been good, <laughs> right. and it really has. You know, shit's been way more fucked up than it's yeah, been good. Yeah. And I got through, you know what I said when we got outside? It was so funny. Like, like not, and I wasn't trying to be funny, but like we got out of the Civil Rights Museum and Lee was like, how you feeling? I'm like, yeah, I can see why niggas don't go to Graceland. <laughs> 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 but it was cool. Then we went back, got our shit, and we went to the uh, airport. Um, the Uber, we took to the airport, ironically, we got an Uber XL going. Okay. And it was an Escalade. Oh, nice. That was cool. It's the, the, only, one, the only Escalade in Memphis. <laughs> in Memphis. We got that going to the airport. Um, and really, like, I'm not trying to be funny. Going to Memphis, the Civil Rights Museum, uh, parking lot pimping at Graceland. Yeah. 
the FedEx Forum, Bill Street, BB Kings. That's it. Dang. After that, you really ain't like. Yeah, it's, you can go see Aretha Franklin's house that she was born in. Okay, but it's a it's literally like an abandoned shack. Damn, people just know that's where Aretha used to live. Um, Yo Gotti, the corner he was trapping on. <laughs> if you want, if you're into that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really not like it's not one of those places where you can find a week. Yeah, you gotta worth give shit. yourself shit to do. Like, all right, where, where's Black Youngster Grandma? House? <laughs> <laughs> what about that donut shop that uh, Dolph a, got killed at? A McKee, McKee was cookies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I didn't even think that they're killing people over there. I didn't. I didn't even think to go there. You know what I'm saying? Those are some killer cookies. Yeah, University of Memphis. You can go see where Derrick Rose used to fuck hoes. Right. You know, <laughs> this is Derrick Rose's yeah. dorm room. And he's the yeah. only one with a balcony. Yeah, <laughs> he used they, to fuck a lot of. They knew he was it. going straight to the hey, first. You know, first pick. So yeah, they had yeah, the, the 47 balcony. is vertical. Yeah, yeah, you know. What I mean? But yeah, it's really not much. It's not one of those places where like L.A. You can kind of do a different L.A. every day. Every time. Like. Every time. No, I mean like every day. Yeah. Like when you're in L.A., you can literally do Beverly Hills one day. You can do Santa Monica one day. You yeah. can do. You can go to Malibu. Fifth Street. The one, like you can yeah. do a bunch of. Dip, you can do. I'm not doing shit but shopping and going to the Lakers game. And like. Right. At, where in Memphis, it's kind of like everything kind of re, re, resorts back to Bill Street. Yeah. And some barbecue. Yeah, I went to fuck shit. I went to L.A. two times within a three week span, and the only consistency from my two trips was uh, crustaceans. Yeah, <laughs> the shit was totally different the two times that I went. Right. Yeah. But all in all, it was cool. It was cool to go down there see the game. Uh, everybody's nice as fuck. Everybody speaks. Yeah. You you. I, 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 the one guy walked to me. He's like, "How you been, buddy?" I'm like, "I have never seen you before." <laughs> he was like, "Still, how you been?" <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that deter you. Don't let that fuck up how you been. <laughs> he dead ass was like, how you been? I'm like, I have never seen you before. <laughs> Everybody's friendly as fuck. Cool as hell. Um, like I said, down there, Bill Street, downtown, it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty clean. Yeah. One thing I did notice, like I said on the Patreon, is just how much unused space they have and how when you're not in a urban oasis, like you said, the metro... Metropolitan area. Met Metropolis. The Metropolis. Yeah. Like when you're not in one of those and you go there, you see no bullshit. There's a unused field right next to the FedEx yeah. Forum. And I'm just like, there's no way that happens up here. It's like when you realize the tallest building in the city is six floors. Yeah. <laughs> like shit like that. That's when you know you in middle America. Yeah. yeah. Like where's the skyscrapers at? What's that? Yeah. yeah. Ain't no skyscrapers. But uh, all in all, like I said, it was cool. You know, a cool yeah. couple of days to go there. It was decent to go to a different arena, you know, different people. Everybody was friendly. Like, and it, you you realize, like I told you, Charlotte, I'll probably never go there again to their arena. Yeah. Because they were, the security was just so nasty. Like, just so, and the security at this joint was literally, like, friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like, the one girl was like, you ain't going to take your plate to your seat, baby? And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to be at the... Sitting course I would have played the greens and corn on the cob. <laughs> she was like, "Boy, you better take your food with you." And I went out there, motherfuckers were sitting on the wood with, <laughs> with plates, corn on the cob, brisket. I'm like, "Yo, this shit is nuts." But it was fun. It was fun. It was cool. Cool couple days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's my Memphis recap. If you go to Memphis, you got to go to the Civil Rights Museum. If you can sneak away and go to, to, <laughs> go to Grace, go to Grace you with some non-judgmental yeah. assholes. If you, if, you get a, if you get a Caucasian Uber driver, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was funny, but our Uber driver, when we left from the zoo, the boy was a black boy. And you know how, like, it's funny, because I don't really catch Uber or Lyft unless I'm on vacation. Yeah. But people be like, when you get in the Uber and the Uber driver doesn't say anything, five stars, right. I prefer that. Because this guy we had, we got in a car. So where are you folks from? Lee was like, oh, we from Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia, live from the 215. You know Hall of Notes is from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And he was like, oh, um, yeah, Philadelphia, man. I, You know, I was I was supposed to actually, I just retired. I worked over here at the mill. I worked there for 25 years. I was in the Army. And years ago, I was supposed to go to Philadelphia. And my plans fell through, and I never made it up there. And I always wonder what I would have been able to get into and see up there. Shot. In a city that nice. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I feel you. And I'm trying to, like, disengage. And then the next thing he comes out with was, yeah, you know, my cousin is Sinbad. He had a heart attack around his birth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yo. Oh, here you go. Shut the fuck up. 
My cousin is Sinbad. His cousin is Sinbad. Don't keep him in your prayers. He's, uh, he's making us. He's making us a smooth recovery. He's making his comedy comeback too right now. He's working the club circuit. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, all, the, all the C and D markets. He texted me. I'm looking at the text. He's like, oh, his cousin. I'm like, no, he won't stop. He was funny as shit. Yeah, all of all, it was it was nice. Like I said, you from up here, you not ready for that everybody friendly shit. Yeah, but you be taking an offensive flight. Like, yeah, you trying to get into something. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean how I been? But it, it was cool. Like it was a cool little place to go yeah. for a couple days. After two days, you you're searching, and you got to be ready to eat barbecue all the time. I told you I had the the, the pulled pork pizza. That that <laughs> shit, that shit was good as fuck. And that's the craziest part. You know this shit is terrible for you. <laughs> But it's so fucking good, you can't stop eating it. So it's 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 a wild dynamic. It was, it was a fun city, all in all. I'm glad y'all had a good time. Yeah, uh, was how was the game? Uh, I took Desmond Bain to score first, hit that. Once they ruled Brandon Ingram out, I took C.J. McCullough. That's niggas high game. They start talking about they picks. Hey, <laughs> listen. <laughs> hey, listen. We are a society of degenerates. Hey, listen. <laughs> Desmond Bain got me motherfucking five hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> nigga. I had Bain to score first plus five fifty for a beam, baby. So oh, motherfucker be bad for both. Mother be cheering for both teams. No. And you know, you know what's funny is I told CJ McCollum like jokingly, I'm like, yo, I'm taking you over tonight when we was in the lobby or whatever. Yeah. And you know, this was right when they dropped the news about the boy from the Falcons getting suspended. So he was like, man, I don't want to hit nothing about no betting. <laughs> so then we get in there, and of course I'm sitting on the wood, so he see me or whatever. He gave me a head nod. I was like, come on, baby. 21, baby. He started laughing. <laughs> so <laughs> he, you know, CJ went off. Mm -hmm. He had like 18, like at the end of the first, like he was yeah. cooking. And when he hit the three, he had like 19, he hit a three to go to 22. I stood up. I was like, there you go, baby, 21 or whatever. He flagged me or whatever, <laughs> laughing. So then on the comeback, I had Desmond Bain to hit four threes. So when Desmond Bain hit his third three, I was like, there we go, baby, Dill. I need one more three. CJ looked up and like, who are you cheering for, dog? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in this arena. I got, I'm looking at the Pacers game. <laughs> I got shit everywhere. Why your fucking business, CJ? Who you cheering for? Nigga, I'm from Philly. I don't know. Who you cheering for, I'm not invested in, in none of this shit. Yeah. It was definitely one of the one of the it wasn't as fun as us on the wood at the Rockets game. Yeah, because we was, were ridiculous. That was hilarious. But it was damn near there because the going zones of it was hilarious. I met the guy who actually got the seats from. The guy who has the season tickets, he's yeah. like, yo, like, and he plugged me in with somebody else. He's like, yo, you need seats throughout the country. Let me know. I got guys. Da, da, da. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, I think it's kind of interesting that I was sitting in your floor seats and you were sitting in floor seats also. On the other side, he's like, well, those are my friend's floor seats. I sold mine. He gave me his. You know how it goes. I do not. I'm like, do not. <laughs> I do not know how it goes. But he was cool. Old white dude, Scott. Shout out to him. Uh... The game, like I said, it was fun as fuck. I hit my little bets. Um, they blew the rock. They blew the Rockets out, the Pelicans out. Excuse me. So uh, they didn't really play in the fourth quarter. Okay. But all in all, like I said, the the crowd, the energy, the 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 players were interactive. Jared Jackson came over to where we was at, and Lee was like, "Yo, his feet big as shit." I was like, "Yeah, he probably was like a 15, 16." So she was like, "No, they bigger than that." I was like, "They look like my Jones." She's like, "No, they're bigger than yours." So I'm like, "Jack, what size shoe you wear?" He was like. And I was like, <laughs> I thought he was trying to be like smart. So I was like, damn, don't ask you. He was like, no, I, I, I don't, 17, 18, some shit like that. And I was like, what? He was like, bro, they give us this shit. I, was I don't like, know. <laughs> I don't pay the shit. <laughs> and I was like, yo, imagine living a life where you get so much shit you on the eye. Shoe size. You don't even know what size you wear of this shit. You're like, man, I just try shit on <laughs> until it fits. <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool. The game was fun as fuck. It was definitely That's cool. What's up. Yeah, enough Memphis. Let's get to some real deal shit. Yes. So, I want to start with 45. It's only right. Being as though we're watching Steve Will Do It yeah. here on YouTube from yeah. the Full Sin Podcast. Full Sin pulled off some impossible shit the last inevitable. week. They pulled <laughs> like, off like, some impossible shit. Like, I, when I seen it, because I'm, I'm subscribed to Full Sin, so when I seen it in my blog role, I'm like, what the fuck? When you sent it to me, I just saw the description and I was just like, I, I, I was so confused that I, I thought I, it was I them. Like, I didn't even click on it. I text you. Yeah. What the fuck is this? And you like exactly what it says. Yes. And I'm like, how? 
We we as podcasters, we often sit around and talk about like dream interviews. Yes. Like we've we've we you and me are both going on record saying we would love to interview Dame Dash. We'd love to interview Mike Tyson, Fifty Cent, Lenny S, Lenny S, Steve Stout. There are just a lot of Damon John. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I let's go, Vicky. Yeah, we're working on yeah. all of them. Yeah, we're working on all of them. Oh, we're soon to be on. Amazon Prime yeah. and, uh, and, Peacock. and Peacock. And Peacock, right. Shout it's out about, to us. It's about to go up, man. You know what I'm saying? It's about to go it's about to up. The pro- yesterday's price is right. not today's price. But one thing we said. But around, it is for a little while. For, so for if you have money, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. money for us, right. we will take whatever money you have. But we sit around and talk all the time about like the viral aspect of content creation yes. because you it's inevitable. You have to think about it. You have to look at it. It's just the world we live in. It exists. And right now, for where we are with inflation, this gas shit, this chicken shit, this steak shit, where we are with all the nonsense that Byron and, and his whole fucking staff is going after none of the shit in which we thought you'd be worried about when right. we elected you. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> For where we are in the world, well, in America, as far as politics, there is no greater interview you could pull off right now other than Donald J. Trump. Yes. There is there is none. When you sent it to me, it was like, yeah, they got Trump on the podcast. I'm like, how? Yeah. Because that was my whole thing. When I seen it in a ball girl, I'm like, no. And I'll just wait and watch something else. I thought it was and some I, fake shit. Yeah, and then I came back to it, and I'm like, yo, Full Send is like, they're credible. Like, these motherfuckers get big-ass guests. They just had Kodak. They had AB, like, the day after he stripped mm-hmm. in fucking New York. Like, I'm like, these motherfuckers pull, like, crazy-ass interviews. So it's like, maybe. So I click on it, and they're like, yo, this uh, Kyle, Steve will do it for the Full Send podcast. We about to go interview Donald Trump. I'm like... I'm watching it and I still don't believe it. Right. Like, man, what the fuck? Then you get into it and then you realize like they've hung with Trump like two or three other times right. because of Dana White. So that's the connection. Mm-hmm. So Trump and Dana White are like this. Apparently right. I had no fucking idea, right. but you know, rich white people stick together. Hey, so man. there's that. And Dana White, they're nothing like rich black people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Dirk and Youngboy trying to kill each other right yeah. now today. Yeah. <laughs> like, but so through that connection, you have this situation where Full Sin gets to go to one of Trump's golf resorts and interview him. Mm-hmm. And just the whole aura around it, because it's like they show you like the setup and the room they in and all of that. It felt presidential as fuck. Yeah. And I'm watching this shit like, bro, he really sat down at a mic like this. And did an interview with these crazy ass young white boys yeah. that do internet pranks and whatever the fuck else. But they somehow, some way, have managed to get the best podcast out. Yeah. Like, excluding, they are kicking everybody's ass. Like, mm-hmm. whoever you think got a big ass podcast, other than Joe Rogan, it ain't bigger than Full Sin. Right. It's just across the board. Urban content, fucking mainstream shit, political. They did the impossible. They interviewed Donald Trump. And gave him a presidential role. And gave him a platinum prezi. Yeah. Steve Steve Will Do It gave him a platinum prezi. And um, the shit did 250,000 views the first hour. Mm-hmm. 2.5 million in four hours. 5 million in 24 hours. And then YouTube promptly took the shit down. Yeah. So now the interview resides on fullsend.com on their website. Uh, but it's literally like 45 minutes of just classic Trump. Mm-hmm. And he's basically on there. He's keeping it as as real as I guess he can. He's talking about voter, the voter suppression shit, which is the reason why it got yanked down because they right. said he was spreading information. He's talking about the fucking oil crisis and how when he was president, they had uh, the oil prices down to $30 a barrel. And he said that they, this is some shit I never even knew about. So I got schooled on this. There's something called the special oil, special reserves for oil that exists in the United States, like down in the like Gulf of Mexico area. Mm-hmm. These special reserves where they can fill oil for backups in the event of like some type of world war shutdown or whatever. So it's like so that we're not going to the market buying oil constantly all the time. Ah. So he said that not only did I have oil down to thirty dollars a barrel, 
I had the special reserves completely filled. And now the gas crisis has gotten so bad. Biden is about to empty the special the reserves. reserves in order to cut some of the fucking inflation tied to gas and this whole thing going on with Russia right now. Mm. And he basically was like saying like, yo, when he was in office, he was like, man, he's like, you know, I didn't have a relationship with Putin pre becoming president, but I like had some feelers out there or whatever. And I was, t and um, I had somebody that I communicated through like an intermediary. And, um, you know, it's like when our first conversation we had, I told Putin, don't you do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't fucking do it. <laughs> He's like, and you know, we had an understanding and we had a, we had a good working relationship. And like, he was Trump, but he was in his blue suit and his red tie. He was classic Trump. And, uh, he was just like kicking his flame. And I was just like, I was just sat there in like in full mesmer mesmerization, for 45 minutes, like these white niggas yeah. got Donald Trump really, on a podcast. Really like, pulled off having Trump on the podcast. And it was one of those moments where the shit was so, so big of a pool and such a good interview that I got jealous. Yeah. Like I got, I, I legitimately got jealous, like fuck. Like, and it was funny because I was explaining it to, to Khalid. He was like, you, like, y'all, y'all really taking this whole not fucking with Biden thing far. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not even like my political views, it's more so just. Pulling a former president, like there are only 42, 41 of them, <laughs> right? Because you have multiple terms. Yeah. So it might be like 37, 38 presidents yeah. to pull a, I, I don't give a fuck if you pull Gerald Ford. It, it's like if you pull an ex president for your podcast, that's humongous, yeah. dog. It was such an inspiring moment because it's basically like, all right, so like, there's certain things that have happened in podcasting, and I don't mean like nigger podcasting. Like I mean like f mainstream, full on some type of corporate supported podcasting. That even still, you know they have these corporate entities behind them, but you're like fuck. Like when Joe Rogan had Elon Musk on there, right? And he got Elon Musk smoking weed, like mm -hmm. shit like that, like shit that's out of the ordinary. Like people that don't talk to nobody right. are coming to talk to you, mm -hmm. and it speaks directly to like the power of fucking meat of, of citizen driven media mm -hmm. and this industry at large to where it's like, it just let me know you got to drown out all the noise. All that bullshit. You have to drown out all the noise, all the blockhead bitches on Twitter, all of the motherfuckers with egg avies and all this shit. And men need to go be electricians and da da da. Cause guess what? I know some electricians that are doing good. They own their own agency. They fucking got uh, commercial contracts and shit like that. They might be making $3 million a year. Steve will do... I watched Steve will do it, give away motherfucking $3 million on six episodes of fucking his, uh, of his blog. So with that being said, it's like, yo, the, 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 the heights that you can grow to and the things that you can accomplish through media and podcasting are unfathomable. Like, one it's thing limitless. I, one thing I always loved about Kanye's, uh, the BBC interview he had, he told him was like, I believe I can do everything. I, people don't believe, that's the, the basis of it. People don't believe they can do shit because they was told they can't do shit. Right. I was told I can do everything. So you know what I believe? I can do everything. So it, to me, it was just decent to be able to see that big of a pull for a podcast. That shit was amazing. Like, I, I did, I, I was mind blown. Like, even, even as I'm watching it, I'm just like, this doesn't make any sense. Like yeah. these motherfuckers like, and then it's like, Oh, you know, we met three prior times. We was at this rally and then we was on air force one with Trump and all this shit. And I'm just like, damn. So you mean to tell me the connection to Trump is the fucking part owner and the commissioner or UFC. Like, it's right. that simple. Like white world is that small. Yeah. You know Dana White, you can pull up ex-president. There, ain't, there, there ain't too many, like, what they call it, uh, degrees of separation. Yes. Yeah, that shit is just like that. Because they they, they openly introduce you once you're on the same level. Yes. Oh, uh, you, you don't know my guy, such and such? Yeah, get with him. And, and walk away. And, and, and walk that's, away. And, that's, that's and the crazy part is I realize shit like that being in these poker rooms. Shout out Dante. I was in the poker room with him today. And, you know, my man Ross used to like, yeah, I, yeah, I don't understand why they all... And I'd be like, because I'm personable. You know what I'm saying? And I, like, I wound up meeting people and getting links to certain shit just strictly on the strength. Oh, you're Rob's guy, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's being how a, they act with you. People, yeah. people don't understand being a cool motherfucker will just take you and so far in life. Oh, you don't know him? That's Rob's guy. Yeah. yeah he's Rob's boy. Yeah. Rob's boy right there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Meanwhile, you'll have niggas that'll hang with you every day. Yeah. Have a direct connection to this person or that person or this, whatever. Something that can literally. Getting good with that. Something, yeah. something that can literally make your life and your business so much easier. And they just, they, they will just resist. Like yeah. you can ask, you can beg, you can plead, you can offer money. They still won't do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You ever, you ever like, you ever like point out to like a, a nigga, you know, like, damn, why you ain't tell me about or put me boop de boop? And then, oh, damn, my fault. And it just be like, yeah, that's that'd be cool. it. <laughs> yeah, like that'd be cool, but it just be like, bro, like you gotta be a, like, it, it just, it amazed me because I, I think it's one of those things where we're just kind of like, we're trained to hoard. Yes. Our, our resources. Niggas don't pass the plug, man. No. We're to tra- nothing. We're trained to hold on to our resources, our things, our money, our, yeah. all this shit. Where in other, what they call it? Uh, nep- nepotism, almost. Yeah. yeah. Like that shit where it's like, there's an abundance. Yes. So everybody could get a little, you know what I'm saying? We could, we could, we could do this. We could do that. To the point where I've realized over years, there are certain conversations I wouldn't even have with certain people just because what, what, what is this going to do for me? This is almost going to ruin my (laughs) spirits. But then I'd go around like shout out Adio. I'd talk to Adio for 10 minutes and feel like, yo, I could take over the entire planet. Cause he, yo bro, anything you need, let me know. Yo, you, you want me to call my guy? I can call him right now and he can set you up with the, literally I'm talking about, I, I haven't seen him in, Probably a good year, probably about maybe more than a year with the whole pandemic. Yeah, I'm seeing him today. White guy in a poker room. He's like, "Yo, you 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 know Vegas? Everything's back on this summer. You know what I'm saying for the World Series?" He's like, "You going out?" He's like, "I was just talking to Tay. They were saying how they're going to play the Millionaire Maker. You know, it starts first week of July." And I was like, "I may come. I don't know yet. Like, I haven't gotten any of the logistics." He's like, "Well, listen, I'm renting a condo. It's a three bedroom. Two of the bedrooms are already uh, booked up." Already used up, but if, if shit, if Ted doesn't come, man, you can use the other bedroom. Even if he does, the couch, man, like, you want to come, just let me know. You, you you know, it's yours. And I'm just like, well, I'll let you know. He's like, well, shit, man, we're right on the strip. Da, 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 da. He gave me the whole address. And it's just like, shit, you don't even got to call me, man. Just pull up. And it's like, he's not joking. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, he's, I know yeah. he's not fucking around. Yeah. And if I come there and he ain't there and Ted there, you know what I'll say? Yeah, yeah, Steve. He's like, oh, you're Steve's guy from Philly, right? right. Yeah, he told you. He was, he was yeah. telling me <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. What's the fucking mashed potatoes, you man? Want, you, like, you, want, you want a pulled pork omelet? <laughs> <laughs> I just got the fucking meatloaf from Boston Market. You, know? you want some of this shit? I mean, like, I'm not going to eat all this shit, no. man. It's like they make you buy the whole meatloaf. No. Like, who the fuck eats a whole meatloaf? It's instantly like this thing of like, oh, this is what you... Like, literally, I saw a motherfucker sign up for the pop, for the Patreon in the poker room just on the strength. It was like, yeah, Trey told me you do like a podcast or something. I was like, yeah, the realest podcast ever. He was like, realest podcast ever. He went and he looked at it on the podcast app. was like, this you right here, the blue logo? He was like, shit, your logo looks good, man. I'm, I'm going to subscribe to it. And I, he was like, and uh, so what do you guys do? I was like, we talk about like everything, like street culture, music, business, sports, fashion, r- watches, credit, everything. He's like, also like a lifestyle. And I was like, yeah. He was like, man, I, I hear the podcast thing is pretty lucrative. He was like, uh, uh, is, is it like on some like you got to like be big? I was like, honestly, no, you do your thing independently. I'm like, we got different avenues. I'm like, we got a Patreon. Da, da, da. He was like, what's that? I was like, Patreon.com. It's like a paid subscription, like paid platform for more content. And he was like, how do I do that? I was like, go to Patreon.com. He was like, oh, shit, same name. I was like, yeah, TRP. He's like, okay. And I didn't think much of it. I walked. Back to my table, I went to the bathroom. He's like, came back. He's like, bro, I'm listening to the Ben Simmons thing. You guys are hilarious. And I was like, you're on there? He signed up to the Patreon just because right. Trey told him, like, that's just how they are. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know his name. Right. <laughs> he just went to Patreon. Like, they're, they're, that's just how it go. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, it's what it's supposed to be. Yes. You know what I mean? So, yeah, for me, it was dope. Not necessarily that I give a, all that too much about what Trump got to say, I'm not going to lie. I do. I do. Trump, Trump, is look, fucking, Trump, <laughs> Trump is fucking hilarious. But I thought it was just decent to see young podcasters pull. Yeah, because these are young guys. Fucking yeah. Steve will do it just turned 23 in August. Fucking Kyle is like 24 or 25. Like, right. these are wildly successful young men. They got millions upon millions of subscribers. Fucking... Kyle, Steve said he met Kyle when he had 300 subscribers. Kyle fucking was already a successful YouTuber, knew how to cut his thumbnails and this and this and do his captions and all of that. And he did, he shot all of Steve's footage, did all his fucking thumbnails and all of his captions. And he fucking shouted him out repeatedly. He got 400,000 subscribers in three days. Mm -hmm. Like you literally, he literally created an economy 
Mm-hmm. For a, somebody he just fucking met. Right. You're talented. You go in places, but you need to change this, 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 and this. I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm going to help you fucking make money. Like, fast forward three years later, he got 4 million subscribers. Full Sin got 4 million subscribers. Like, they're kicking ass. They got the Happy Dad Company together. They got Wizard that's fucking sponsoring them. Like, they're killing shit. Mm-hmm. Steve will do it, flies around the country giving away money and cars and shit like that to people. We bought Kodak Black a dunk because yeah. he got shot in the leg. He's like, I don't even know Kodak, but like, he seems like a nice guy and he got shot. He's probably sad. I'm going to buy him a car. <laughs> the guy that fucking uh, killed Osama, he gave him a, tr- a brand new uh, Ford F-150. Yeah. Platinum edition, pickup truck. Oh, shout out the game. We have yeah. to give game his flowers. Yeah. Game got one over on the universe. Just because I'm sitting here, this is this how the universe works. I'm watching fucking Steve Will Do It on YouTube. Mm-hmm. The guy that killed Osama bin Laden, the Army Ranger that killed Osama bin Laden, one of the 23 baddest motherfuckers on Earth. On the planet. On the planet. <laughs> he said, yeah, we were playing. He confirmed it. We were playing Red Nation by game in the chopper on our way to go to the house to fucking kill Osama. And he talks about, there was a female CIA agent that discovered, that found Osama. Mm-hmm. Like I said, from the zero dark 30 movie and all that shit. Like he told it the same exact way. So game and whack. You now have one point on the scoreboard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to you guys. Now we still need receipts on that. What up, blood? What up, cuz? What up, gangster? That y'all are claiming because I do not, be- I absolutely do not believe you. What was that? They're trying to say that game wrote what up, oh, what, what up, up yeah, blood? Yeah. For, uh, what up, cuz? For uh, fifty, yeah, I, I do not believe you. I don't believe that at all. But yeah, shout out to Full Sin. Shout out to Steve. We'll do it. Getting Donnie T. Keeping it presidential. Let's go from the super cool to the super sublime. <laughs> Come sublime on, is a great word. That's a word of the week. Yes, a great word. It's rare that I pull out word of the week. No, that's a good one. I was was listening to Drake. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all was listening to Drake all day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I played Dirk's album front to back, and then I was like, I need to play some Drake. Playing, skipping around. What do you say? Uh, All of that shit sublime. See, I'm ahead of the curve every time. Yeah. Yeah, sublime's a good word. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Kamalia. Our Indian uh, black first lady. Is uh, she uh, African American? She said she identifies as Indian Indian American. Yeah, they kind of sold us on her being the first black. Well, here's the thing: she never said it. <laughs> All her supporters, they did. just sold they us. Did, yeah. yeah, they they sold. Who 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 is they? They they sold us on it. Uh, but yeah, she says she identifies as a. Uh... I put in a three team uh, same game zone for the Sixers game. I took Joel Embiid to have thirty five. He has thirty five. I took Joel Embiid to have 15 rebounds. He has 16 rebounds. Hey, Joel. I, t- I took James Harden to have 10 assists. He only has four. Well, all right. It's ugly. Dang. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, Even so, the Jones I miss, I literally be right there. Shit is terrible. Yeah, Look. so Kamalia was uh was over in Poland. Yeah, Kamalia was in, in Poland, and she was a dr- <laughs> doing a, an, an address, and she got po- – what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at the memory, oh, uh, <laughs> the memory of of her. I'm looking at the video like yeah. I can't wait to cut the sound yeah. over y'all. She got posed with a question about inflation. Yes. Shout out to Cure Hip Hop because that's where I first saw <laughs> that. And do you want to play Kamalia's answer? I, we have. I want to play it, it verbatim so okay. y'all can't say we miscategorized okay. it or we lied on her. Do you think it? Scene. The UN has set up a process by which there will be a review and investigations and we will, right, of course, participate. One. Yeah, that's definitely the wrong one. That's the wrong one. That's later on when she was tripping. Uh, it was the same limps. Oh, here we go. I'm not saying, I, I I got President Biden has said that Americans will feel some pain for the sake of defending freedom and liberty, but there does seem to be no end game in sight. How long should Americans expect? How long should we be bracing for Um, this really sort of um, historic inflation and some unprecedented gas prices. In terms of uh, the discussions that the President Johannes and I had, uh, they ranged in subject including the issue of the Black Sea and I'll let him explain in more detail as he would like, uh, but We are, again, 
fully aware and apprised because we are in constant communication with the president, with his administration here about the concerns that they have about the entire region and frankly the vulnerability. All you have to do is look at the map. What? <laughs> the best part of that video and y'all didn't see it because we don't have the picture and picture shit. The best part of the video is the guy specifically addresses the question to her. And then she looks at my man like Polish cuss. Yeah. <laughs> you got something on this? Oh, no, that's for me. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, that question wasn't on my list, <laughs> so I don't have an answer for it. So I'm just going to talk about the Black Sea and the whole region and yeah. like. Jigga's first album. <laughs> All these things like. Yeah, that 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 was really bad. That that was <sighs> out to lunch. I think the Dems might have ruined their their at least as far as the president. Yeah, I I, I here's the thing. Ever. <laughs> like, yeah, no. It's <laughs> like I said it the other night. I said, man, and and you know, maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic, but it's just like I'm looking at this shit like as objective as possible. And I and my tweet was the Democrats are gonna rue the day they allowed dumb and dumber to take office because Y'all are basically guaranteeing that y'all might not touch the presidential uh, office again for at least four to seven uh, like presidential cycles. Like, yeah, y'all yeah, y'all pretty much have stamped it to where it's just like, yo, as bad as a job there there could be there could have been done. Y'all have somehow managed to do a worse job than anticipated, mm -hmm. simply by not doing anything that you agreed to or said you were going to do making this all about fucking infrastructure and basically coming up with some of the most harebrained cockamamie policy I ever heard of in life. Yeah. Why the fuck does the United States government care to have access to vehicle kill switches that all cars are putting in place, manufacturers are putting in place in 2026? Why do y'all care? Cause you're not even going to be in office past 2024. Yeah. Why the fuck is this part of like your agenda of policy? They tried the fucking $600 tax shit. Everybody else rebuffed them. And then the fucking, the, uh, the technology company said, all right, we'll report it as $600 or more for businesses only, not for per. So it's just like, it's just like little, like, this little, like these little microaggressions and mm -hmm. like these little small nuanced, like policies that they're trying to put in place essentially to fuck Americans over. I talked about this on Patreon a while ago. They did an independent audit of like 235, uh, an independent audit of 235 independent tax audits. Mm -hmm. And what they found that there was only slight impropriety, not gross impropriety in nine out of the 235 cases. So what, what that means is that less than 10%, less than 5% of the cases that were examined in this fucking peer reviewed study came back with any form of slight impropriety. And you're going to build policy around the less than 5%. I have a problem with that as right. an American citizen. Like right. you're literally wasting everybody's time and money on something like this. And the companies, the banks and the big banks and all that shit was like, suck my dick. <laughs> like we're not doing this. Who's going to pay us to, to hire people to push this additional paperwork yeah. for y'all. And like, there's no benefit to our bottom line. We're not doing it. And you know what they did? They didn't fucking do it. <laughs> all the technology companies like on a personal, on a peer to peer basis, we're not doing this. We'll do it for the business accounts that we have. Like, because it's a it's an infinitesimally smaller sample size to be able to do it for, you know, businesses or whatever than for personal people. So it's like, yo, they've just gotten it wrong again and again and again and again and again. And it's just like, it's it's almost like funny to watch. It's just like how bad they consistently miss the mark. And then now you almost have like basically uh, Byron Barry Kamala in the back of the outhouse of the White House for the last year and a half. And now all of a sudden it's like, yo, they don't fuck with me. Get out there and talk to these <laughs> niggas. <laughs> they sick of me. Yeah, they oh, definitely yeah. are tired of my ass. Yeah. Get out there and talk to these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you you could work your motherfucking magic. They and said th Byron has the uh, second lowest approval rating ever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just like, I don't know what his... Uh, 
his redemption is going to be that's going to make him a palatable candidate going forward. And me and Rich Philly, shout out Rich, uh, shout out uh, Mama Philly too. Uh, we was talking about it on Twitter the other morning. It was basically just like, yo, he might have put a grenade into her campaign of running for president because of the direct association and the fact that she's going to get all the same blowback for all this goofy ass policy and all this stupid shit that's going on. She's going to catch that too. So she's not a viable candidate. So right. it's like, you look at the two top presidential candidates that they had waiting in the wings from the democratic party, which was They're Cuomo done. and Gavin Newsom. Yeah. They're done. They are done. But then you got other people. There's the governor from Massachusetts, a uh, progressive uh, black guy. Then you got a senator from uh, New York that's like 51 years old. Like they trying to groom him as like the next Obama or whatever black guy too. So it's like you got these different people that are like waiting in the wings. But I'm like none of them are strong enough to beat Trump. Right. Or just to beat the GOP in general. And we've already seen what happens against the GOP when you trot out a less than satisfactory or a less than dynamic candidate. They got the floor wiped with them with Hillary. Hillary thought she was going to sleepwalk her way into the fucking office. The mainstream fucking liberal media did everything they could do to call it, call Trump a clown and this ain't going to happen and da da da. And he's a bozo. And if you vote for him, you a bozo too. And you know what happened? It riled all of his base up to go out there and vote for him. And he crushed Hillary, beat her in a landslide. So it's like, yo, do y'all want to produce a less than satisfactory candidate potentially to go up against that again? In 2024, I don't think that y'all do. So the Democratic Party has really hamstrung themselves by failing to produce like a young enough, energetic enough, dynamic enough candidate post Obama um, that really has something to say and has policy that connects to the people. This country is getting younger and smarter for the first yeah. time in its history. And people are not falling for the bullshit that we, as far as politics go, that we fell for years ago, as far as like our parents and our grandparents and all of that like shit. We kind of walked into the, I think this is the last election we walked into as a people with the whole attitude of, let's just pick the lesser of two evils. Yeah, the lesser of two evils politics is over. Yeah. You either going to show people specific results that adhere to their culture, to their culture and their eth ethnic groups, or they're not going to vote for you. It's as simple as that. People have visible buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. Some of the biggest Byron supporters are now on Twitter. Like I, how many times a day do you see? I regret voting for Joe Biden. Yeah. You see it at least 15, 20 times a day from various accounts. And every single one of those tweets is semi viral or viral. Right. Because people are Remember feeling they had a whole that shit. montage on YouTube yes. for people with that shit. Yeah. People are pissed the fuck off. People thought that they were gonna get legal marijuana. People thought they were getting fucking tax breaks. They they sold motherfuckers on the oh you 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 uh you, you know the the tax change is not gonna affect people uh that make uh less than four hundred thousand a year. Now people are already seeing it that the tax shit affects you if you make as little as sixty thousand a year. Right. It's all this bait and switch politics that went on that people are this about right. and they're not going to let this shit stand and there's a zero percent chance that byron gets reelected if he's even interested there's a zero percent chance that kamala is going to win she was what six out of all the democratic candidates last time yeah. she dropped out way early right. so he basically picked her as a pander move to the black community which she don't even identify as black like what are we doing here yeah. we just assigning value and assigning culture and all of that shit to people that they not even assigning to they self. Yeah, that's a very good, that's an interesting point. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we smoked ourselves. Like nobody made us do this. <laughs> we, we killed ourselves. Like yeah. we are, we are in a bad way, man. And it's just like, yo, there is no answer for the inflation. There is no answer for the fucking gas prices. That's a global crisis. The inflation is global, all of that shit. But there have been no, concerted efforts or measures to figure out ways to stave off some of the inflation. When the inflation was starting to creep up at no point did fucking the treasurer or the fucking head of the fucking uh, federal reserve bank go on TV and say, Hey, y'all know if y'all stop spending money for like three weeks, like the inflation will just go away right. because we won't be able to fucking give y'all the supply demand bullshit. Like it'll just, it'll just ease itself. Like, no, they didn't tell you to do that. They told watching, you to go out there, buy cars, buy this, buy shop for Christmas, did it, buy uh, cruise fucking clothes. They they told you to spend more money. I was watching the news the other day, and they were saying uh, ways to save um, 
with the inflation. Yeah. And their number one joint they had was to start shopping at local farmers markets because local farmers markets grow their veggies. Yeah, they're not on the same uh buy scale yeah. as like the, the large chains well. and all because that. Because they, they don't have to worry about transporting all those different mm-hmm. things. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's cool. But what about the G-Wagon being too <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, cucumbers for, for regular prices is cool, but it's like, and that's what me and Tay, shout out Dante, we was talking today where when they tell you about inflation, right, and they tell you how gas is up 40 cents, right, and they say that packs of chicken wings are now $17 instead of $11, right, they're talking about the, what's the word I'm looking for, like the entry level right, to inflation. Yes, yes. Because on the flip side where... The iPhone used to be two hundred dollars. That was thirteen. That was thirteen hundred. You understand what I'm saying? The Timberlands are two hundred one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and then once you start in getting into the higher end of shit, everything costs more. Everything is more expensive. Yes. Like, uh, tires are more expensive for your car. You know, when you go on trips now, the Uber ride is more expensive than what it was. Yeah. Plane, you see where plane tickets have shot back the fuck up now to where, remember that whole little shit where you could go to Istanbul for $33? <laughs> right? All that shit is out. You go to Miami, they give you a voucher for going. <laughs> it'll go, it go $44 future flight voucher. This this one is on us. Like, bruh, like a flight. I looked at flights right now from, from here to Charlotte. That shit was like 700 for the coach. Right. I don't even know if it's called coach anymore. Is it economy? Economy. Yeah, I'm an old nigga. Yeah, there's, there's, and now there's premium economy, and then there's basic economy. Yeah. Basic economy, you don't get nothing. No. You, you got to stand up and hold the joint like yeah. you're on the train. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, there. Like, this shit is bad. But listen, I saw this viral tweet the other day. My homie was like, have you ever flown Spirit? I was like, no. He was like, yeah, that's the worst, because you got to pay for everything. Like, you pay for your seat. You sitting on a beach chair. He was like, you... <laughs> You got to pay for your seat. Then you got to pay for a back. I'm like, what the fuck is a back? He's like, the back to the seat. You just... <laughs> yeah, don't just come with that. <laughs> nigga, you better get your posture up, nigga. What the fuck are you talking I about? I can't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? You got to get your posture up, pussy. Yeah, you just get the seat that you sit on. You don't so, get yeah, the back. So, yeah, there was a viral tweet the other day from this account, uh, Zach Seward, Z Seward on Twitter. He said, Doritos removed five chips from mm. every bag. Bounty trimmed his rolls by three sheets and wheat thins determined that family size is now two ounce smaller, all for the same price as before. Great look at how inflation often hides in the air pockets of emptier packaging. So literally everybody has made the determination that you either going to get less or you want to pay more. Yeah. Either way, you know because what I'm saying? Because if we take five chips out of this bag, out of that bag, out of that bag, we got a whole oh, another bag. bag of chips. Yeah. Let me take five out of that. Bag. Yeah, it's we, like you know, it's, it's like when when hackers pull uh like mm-hmm. phishing schemes and shit like that. You take a percentage of a percentage of a percentage because it's like, all right, if y'all got a billion dollars at, at, at under management, and then we take a per, a, a, a percentage of a percentage of a percentage of every transaction, it equals out to be a lot of money and in the exactly. end. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, we take five chips from here, five from here. Da, 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 da. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Over time, we'll 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 create uh we'll create the uh. The, the the basis of a whole nother product. Yeah. And um, it's just one of them things where it's like, yo, you can't escape the inflation. The shit is everywhere. Manufacturing costs is up. Shipping costs is up. They still haven't fixed the fucking supply chain, which is why my Gap stock fucking lost 100% of its value in fucking 30 days because they mm-hmm. missed their fucking Q4 uh, estimates and all of that shit. And Kanye signing contracts with Gap and Melissiaga, and they doing collabs with Dapper Dan and all this old shit, and y'all still haven't fixed the fucking stock price. Like, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of this shit that's going on is all performative. Like, it doesn't add to the actual bottom line of nothing, but it's cute, and it looks cool for marketing purposes. The DAP hoodies look phenomenal, but my stock price didn't go up. I have a theory. I hate to be conspiracy theory, Matt, but I feel like some of this inflation, not all of it, but some of this inflation is... Man-made inflation. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's, it's, oh everybody else inflating. Everybody it's inflating all, or we inflating? We inflating too, baby. Yeah, because some of the shit don't even need to be inflated, but it's like, fuck it. If yeah. we can get away with it, why not? Yeah, no, we lost four truck drivers last week. Everything's going up 39%. Yo. <laughs> like, it's like that sort of thing. Like, they don't, yo, they, they are, I it's told a money you, grab I told people, you we yeah. went to the California Pizza Kitchen, and she got a 
Southwest something salad. The salad was $24.99. No problem. But they brought the salad out and it had iceberg lettuce. And she was like, what the fuck is this? And I, I was like, what? And she was like, I've never seen this salad with iceberg lettuce. And I was like, what's wrong with that? She's like, it's like the cheapest, worst lettuce yeah. you could possibly have. And normally they do it with romaine. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. I, I got a pizza. We're in California. Pizza. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And... She was like, they should tell you that when you order it. Like, oh, you know we make it with iceberg lettuce now instead of romaine. Mm -hmm. And she like, it's the, like, like I, I spent $30 for a salad that's literally the cheapest. Like, she's like, that lettuce is like wet and it doesn't taste like romaine. Yeah. And she was going off about it. And I'm like, what's crazy is this store could easily not have an issue with getting lettuce and just like, fuck it, we're going to buy the cheaper lettuce and just be like, yeah. Right. <laughs> And it's shit like that where I don't even think it's real live issues. Because think about this. All the stuff is still getting there. Yeah. Remember when it was actually like people were robbing, not robbing, but fighting and stabbing over toilet paper because yeah. there wasn't much of it? <laughs> right? It's all there now. So why yeah. are you inflating if it's all here? It's, it's, it's scary. Yeah, no, there's a lot of manufactured inflation. And, you know, typically what happens is that smaller companies take their cues from the biggest and best companies. So mm -hmm. it's like, yo, if Apple is raising prices, then Samsung raised prices. It's just like, it just is what it is. Whatever the fuck the market leader is doing, right. then th it's going to be follow the leader. Like it's like an are, IPO, like an initial uh, price. It's like you, you set the price. Yeah. You know, if you set the price at this, then that's what the price is. Yeah. Because the whole thing is they like, we could always, if we, if we raise it too high and we kill our business, we could always drop it back down to the original. But it, a few people going that need whatever going to buy it at the price that we set. If you got a pair of sneaks and you like, oh, I want a thousand dollars of these and somebody buys them, those sneaks are a thousand dollar sneaks now. So if somebody else comes along and he like, oh, shit, they sold for a stack. Oh, I want a stack. Then right. he sells them for a stack. It gets to the point where somebody six, seven pairs down the line. If somebody steps up and be like, oh, I'm selling them Jones for 400. You know what the thought is? What's wrong with them? Right. Because my everybody mind else told me a stack that that's what they were. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you tell people something enough times, it becomes true. It becomes the truth. No matter how ridiculous or far out it may initially seem, but if do that repetition in the program of consistently telling motherfuckers something, it becomes truth and the facts. That's exactly what the fuck it is. Our economy is is cooked. With that being said, our economy is cooked. Um, it cost me eighty dollars to fill up the X4 today. I was disgusted, and that was ninety one, not even ninety three. Bro, I'm driving the Ultima. And just because that shit is a V4 yeah. and you can fill the tank up and you fill the tank up, it's like 12,000 miles empty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've been driving that bitch. I went to the gas station this morning. Yeah, I put $50 in it, bro. That shit went slightly above the half. I was like, what the fuck? <sighs> if, if you have good business credit, go to Wex online <laughs> and get you a gas car. Okay. There goes the gym from Big Daniel. <sighs> Make me sick. Sickening, dog. Uh, y'all weird is the people... I got two y'all weirds for the week. Okay. Uh, my first one is the people who are online trying to shame people that are complaining about gas. People that are doing all of this, oh, I thought y'all was all rich and starting businesses and generational exactly. wealth and having Gucci and Louis and flying here and going there. Now y'all complaining about gas. Bitch, I'm complaining because I'm complaining. Yeah. I know the fuck is wrong with y'all. Just because I pay a lot of money for one thing doesn't mean I inherently want to pay a lot of money for everything. That's how you go broke. <laughs> like, I, I, if everything is overinflated, like that's how you, that's I'll an eventuality to, I, you go broke. I'll go to Eddie V's and spend $350 on a meal. If I go to Wendy's tomorrow and I say, yo, let me get four sauces and they say it's gonna be 30 cents a sauce. I'm throwing a fit. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? People are so it's it's it, it, it's like we talked about last night. People have literally gotten to the point where the entire social media shit is people trying to make themselves seem above the next yeah. person. Y'all ain't on y'all ain't doing what I'm doing. I, I ain't never complaining about gas. Y'all niggas some broke ass niggas, and, dog. And it's like, no, people are complaining about gas because it's a part of the inflation hamster wheel yes. that we don't see ending. I don't think people really, really take it in. Gas was two dollars not long ago. Not long ago. It had got down to two dollars. It's five now. <laughs> it's five. <laughs> 193 in Jersey. <laughs> Dog, it was two dollars when we was recording over Jersey. I remember getting gas yeah. before coming. It was two bucks for premium. It's like that wasn't too long. It was a couple years. We had got that shit down. Now for you to look up and see regular gas is 472 is like damn. It's it, it, it's 
like gas is higher than it was after Katrina. And gas, get it fucked up. Gas is a bill. I know people might not like to look at it like that, but I'm just keeping it tall. Yeah, you gotta leave you, out your house with any regularity. If you go, <laughs> if you drive to work every day, where you spending. 50, 60, 70 dollars a week on gas, nigga. That's a 240 dollar a bill a month bill. Yep. Most of your bills ain't 240 dollars. You will spend more on gas than you spend on your utilities if you in the right situation. Chick the other day was like, "All right, yeah, I just got my Pico bill, and I I'm pretty sure that they're charging me for the street lights." <laughs> <laughs> Yo, a friend of mine, I looked at uh, her bills. Her bill the other day, like her rent and, and, and the utilities and all that is all included. So we looked at the history of the bill together. So all summertime was like 16, 17, 16, 35, 16, 08, shit like that. The last three months, the shit just crept up, crept up, crept up. The bill was like 19, 15 this month. I'm like, huh? Like this don't even make any sense. Oh, like 1900. 1900. Okay, okay. So from 16, 08 to 1915 now. And I'm just like, Yo, what the fuck is that? They, she like, yeah, I called the, the 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 management office. They saying that that's a utility. I'm like, your apartment is like a thousand square feet. Like, what utility are you operating at right. this rate? Like, I'm like, they, I'm like, does the, your dildo plug in? Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, like, what the fuck? Like, eventually, the overrules in the road. Yeah. Yeah. If you just leave, like, smart energy people tell you just leave your heat on at a comfortable never turn it off once you cut your heat on don't turn it off you turn it you manipulate the temperature to a man, to between manageable levels for yourself because it takes more energy generated to cut it off and then cut it back on mm-hmm. than it does just leave it running so by that standard if my if if all of my shit is ran on electric and I'm not running my bill 24/7 how do I end up with a $300 electric bill right none of this makes sense and you would think that for the per capita, the size of the, the space or whatever, you would be capped out at some point. Right. Like, it just wouldn't rise. And it's like, yo, we looked at the history, and from October 4th, you just see the bill creep up, creep up, and then it shoots up over 1900 1865 last month, and then 19-something uh, for March. And I'm just like, yo, this is crazy. Man. Everything is high. Everything. Everything is high. And that's not even with Pico. That's with a private company. Yeah. So, you know, they just charging whatever the fuck they want. Like, what's my energy rate? $27 an hour? I told you, one of my homegirls came and looked at a unit in my building, and, uh, and she told me what the prices was. I'm like, we're not even close. Like, what the fuck? What unit yeah. did you, you, what you looked at? The, you the uh, presidential suite? Yeah, the Queen, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth unit. <laughs> I was like, what unit you looked at? She was like, no, the girl in the office told me all of the units right now have an 8% upcharge. I'm like, for what? She was like, I don't know. Like, dog, like apartment uh, builders is like, am I looking 8%? And the shit that they making you do to qualify for an apartment oh, is worse than buying a house right now. Six, six pay stubs, six months bank statement. Yeah. Yeah. W-2. It's incredible. 1040. Yeah. Blood sample. Damn. <laughs> yep. Urine sample. Over, uh, over, <laughs> over his scan. Yeah, it's crazy. Damn. It's like, yo, I'm like, yo, y'all do know I need less information to buy a house, right? Like, I didn't know that. Yo, it's crazy. Damn. It's crazy. It was a it was an apartment complex in Atlanta. Somebody had posted their oh, requirements. Man. The shit went viral like a week ago. It, it's it's ridiculous, yo, the shit that they getting away with. There's an apart there's an apartment group here in the Philly metro area in Ardmore. They own the Kelly and then another building right next to it. Then they own another one further down, like in the heart of Ardmore. These motherfuckers make you go through three levels of identity scan before you even get into the full application of applying for the apartment. What do you mean? Meaning like we need we need this ID, we need your social, we got to put you through a service where like, you know, sometimes like if you got a uh if you got a blocker on your credit where you got to fill okay, out okay. the joint whatever, you got to fill that out and you got to do like a biometric scan to prove that you are who you say you are. And then mm. you apply for the apartment. I'm like, am, are we leasing an apartment or like buying a zoo? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> I'm sorry for the people that gotta go do that. Now. <laughs> that Man. shit is crazy, and it's all because during the pandemic, a lot of people fucking just was squatting, not paying their rent because they knew that they wasn't gonna be able to get evicted. And then once they lift the rent moratorium, cool, y'all couldn't report it this whole time because that was federal law. So people just applied to another apartment, got in there, bounced out, and just left them stuck with the bill. 
and started they slate clean and they like, all right, cool, I'm settled where I'm at. I ain't moving no time soon, so I ain't got to apply for no apartments. So whatever negative information y'all do hit me with, it don't affect me because I'm already living where I'm living. Mm. Damn, we missed our wave. Missed our wave. We missed our wave, <laughs> baby. Could have yep. got out of there. Well, I wouldn't have moved. I like where I'm at. Yeah, but when I moved, when I moved here, I got two months free rent. Pay like four hundred dollars to move in. Filled out fucking one form or whatever. She filled out her information because she was gonna be living here and all that shit, and it was done. Like you know the trick to that when they give you the free months rent, you're supposed to break it down. Nah, fuck that. I took my two months free too, flat out. Too, no, but you break it down over the month so it make your monthly Jones. Nah, cheaper. fuck that. I like that. Yeah, I didn't pay rent for two whole months. Yeah, two whole months. Like, <laughs> yeah. I go log in, say zero due. Yeah, that's my type. Of, <laughs> that's my type of balance. Nah, <laughs> give me, give me that nine fifty every month, man. I'll be right there with it. The only problem with it is when you've been paying nine fifty every month for a year, and then you go look, you rent two thousand dollars. <laughs> and you're like, wait, wait. You're like, yeah, that's what it normally be with the up charge. You're like, oh shit. But yeah, uh, y'all niggas got any more of them promos? Y'all got any more of them promos? <laughs> Calling Comcast. I'm about to cancel this motherfucking service. Y'all gonna give me a promo? Y'all don't send me another motherfucking Visa Yo. gift card. It's I'm over from the eighth floor to the ninth floor. Yo. So that count as a new promo. I was hurt the other day when I uh. Cause I went to go get some work done on my uh, car okay. a couple months ago. I went and got my oil, nothing crazy. I got my yeah. oil changed or whatever. And I went to Firestone cause they had nothing at the Lexus. I was like, well, I'm gonna just go to Firestone. I just need my tires rotated and the oil changed. So I went there and Lee was like, oh, use my Firestone credit card. So I'm like, okay. So when I got there, I used it. The guy was like, yeah, we're doing a special thing today. Any any use of your Firestone credit card where you spend a hundred dollars, um, you get back a hundred dollar gift card. Rebate. Oh shit. So it was basically free and shit. Yeah. So I was like, oh shit. So my total came to uh, $92. So I was like, I was looking around and shit. He was like, you want a hat? Oh, you give me that. You know? <laughs> so I got a fire. I got some wiper blades and some shit. So I got a Firestone hat for like $10 or You whatever. be in there looking like, yo, y'all got any of the, uh, the, 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 the air hole covers, the, the dice? <laughs> The valve covers. The valve covers. The dice. <laughs> the dice. <laughs> So they, they, so whatever, whatever. They was like, yeah, you know, I, I qualified for it or whatever. He was like, yeah, your, your gift card will be there or whatever in three months or whatever. I'm like, damn, three months, all right, whatever. So the other day I was like, uh, damn, I really want some food from Eddie V's or whatever. And Lee was like, oh, you want me to just go get some takeout order? I'm like, yeah, give me a 12 ounce of some of the, uh, the fried rice, you know, I like the crab fried rice or whatever, yeah. whatever. So uh, I called and ordered it, and the, the total was like one. 20 or whatever. She's like, I'll go pick it up. So she came in, whatever we eat. I enjoyed it, whatever. The next day, I just happened to look at the counter. I see a card on the counter from, it was like this weird bank or whatever. And I was like, what the hell is this? She was like, the gift card Firestone sent for the whole thing. I was like, oh shit, the $100 joint. I'm like, oh, this is money. And I went to sign on my credit card. She was like, ain't nothing on there. I'm like, what do you mean? She was like, the food I got last night. I'm like, you mean to tell me you <laughs> used my gift card? <laughs> went off. I was like, man, I was paying for in the house. <laughs> fuck, you just gonna use my gift card? She's like, it was for your food. What the fuck? I had plans for this. Yo. I was like, I was like, but it's my, I'm like, it's my gift card. I'm like, my transaction is what triggered the gift card. She was like, you know you didn't even pay for your damn transaction on my credit card. I'm like, you, this oh, was all this shit, is, <laughs> shit is inconsequential. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad to the motherfucker. I was like, hey, you just gonna use my gift card? She's like, hey, listen, this shit was sitting there. We needed to use it. What the fuck? I was like, yeah, I didn't even realize this shit came. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, we good. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the inflation shit is just everywhere. And like me and Dante was talking, once you start getting into higher levels of shit, the inflation shit is such, it's such a grand, extreme yeah. thing. Like we, you and me were talking about the watch shit the other day. That, that, yo, Chad a couple <laughs> ep episodes ago was like, we was talking about watches and the inflation. And you was like, the Rainbow Daytona. You was like, talking about how it's like a cat nigga bought one. Like, I know you full of shit. You was like, that watch might be 450 a half a ticket. Today I seen one on fucking Chrono for seven hundred. Seven hundred. And I'm like, this can't be right. So then I go into the group. I look in there, see Rainbow. I go and search Rainbow Daytona in the Rolex group on Facebook. Dude is selling a 2012 for six hundred grand. I'm like, this is what yeah. you're dealing with out here in the world. Watches right have outpaced the S and P 500. Everything. The, the Dow Jones. The stock market on the whole is outpaced crypto. 
real estate market. Like Rolexes have seen a 40% rate of return from 2020 to now. Yeah. Like as far as growth across the whole fucking product line. Like it's sick. Like it's crazy. It's insane. It's insane, yo. It's insane. Like I'm ready. I'm taking out. I'm actively right now. I got an inquiry in now. I got a fucking life insurance policy that my dad signed me up for when he mm-hmm. was working for the life insurance agency. I'm about to take a loan out against my fucking life insurance policy and buy watches. Like, yeah. like it's it's a better investment. It's like, fuck the funeral. And yeah. I found out I got an addendum to my policy. I got a $50,000 accidental uh, death journal. So if I die in an accident, they still pay out 50 grand regardless. Oh, so shit. y'all niggas is covered. Y'all still don't got to pay for the funeral. <laughs> Mom, Steve, Nene, Jada, y'all good. Y'all don't even got no. y'all don't even got to pay for the funeral, yo. Y'all still straight. You know, that's, what I'm saying? that's not a bad look, honestly. Yeah, like, I'm just like, man. My man was like, yo, I'm thinking about doing this with my 403B. I'm like, nigga, do that shit. Like, fuck that money. Pay, like, you going if you gonna give me forty five thousand today in exchange for a monthly payment? Guess what I need? The forty five thousand. Yeah. Like, bust a move. Bust a move. I don't give a fuck if it's thirteen thousand. Give it to me. Yeah. That's why all these artists are selling their catalogs. Cash me out. Cash me out. I don't need Ain't it. no guarantee I'm going to be here. Yeah. Niggas is dying everywhere. Niggas dying in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Give me, Give right me now. mine now. Man, my Give man, me Taylor, we was having a conversation. He was talking about the whole 401k shit being a scam. And he was like, bro, you mean to tell me y'all going, the whole matching me bullshit, all this. Okay, cool. So what you're telling me is, at first I got to work to 72, right? <laughs> if I make it to 72. If I die before that and my kids try to get it, y'all going to tax them, mm-hmm. right, on the money they get. He's like, it's, it's, it's nonsense when you really, really sit back and think about this. I told you I watched that documentary on uh, uh, Social Security and all that, yeah. that shit, where it's like they really sold Americans on the 401k. Like, oh, you get a job and they got a 401k yeah. and they match you. And it's just like, yeah, that, but that's not a real good guarantee because at the end of the day, I'm basically betting that I'm going to make it to 65. And stay here. And stay here. Yeah, whilst doing it. <laughs> and that's the scam part of it. Right. At fucking Enterprise, I think you had to work there... Uh, Seven years to become fully vested in your 401k. It was like every anniversary you would get like an update from Fidelity telling you you're this much vested now. You're this much vested, blah, 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 blah. But prior to your seven year vestment, you basically have to take a loan against your own money. Mm -hmm. And that's the nutty part. Even with like that, that, uh... The, the ING shit, it's like you got to go to them with a hardship just to be able to touch yeah. your paper. The only benefit to the 401k shit is for tax sheltering. Yeah. If you make a lot of money, and like when I say a lot of money, I mean like more than 90000 a year. Yeah. If you make a lot of money, you want to ta- you want a tax shelter, you want to max out on a 401k because you can put away 12500 a year pre-taxed. So it lowers your tax threshold and it is technically your money, but you got to jump through hoops on the back end to get it. So, and if there's a company match, you want them maxing, matching you at the maximum amount in order to get that money. But the reason why they're doing it is the same reason why you're doing it. It's tax sheltering. That's all it is. So it's like, it's not a benefit to the company. It's no. it's a bottom line issue. We're matching this niggas twelve. Yes. So cut us a break. Exactly. Yeah. Cut us a all. We got a, a unlimited twelves that are being, <laughs> that are being put to the side that we're matching. Stack some of them fives, on top of some of them sixes, on yeah. top of some of them eights. None of it is accidental. <laughs> like everybody is trying to find ways to lower their fucking tax threshold. Right. Especially if you live in New York State or California, like. Yeah. You need to be looking for anything you got. Flexible spending for anything that's pre-tax deduction. You should be taking benefit to that shit. Mm-hmm. Because the the taxes are, are just ridiculous. I think they I saw a graphic. It was like under the Biden plan, your effective tax rate in New York State was like 47.6%. When you include all federal and state taxes and city taxes, 47.6%. It's crazy, like, with the just the cities, like how it break down yeah. being in Philadelphia. Philly hit you for extra 8%. You know, I found this out. People who work at the airport, if you work in a terminal, you don't pay Philly tax. Yeah, because you in Tenecum. Yeah. Crazy, right? <laughs> you in a terminal, like, oh. <laughs> Back up, nigga. I'm going to step over the line. here with these, with these B niggas. B and C niggas. I'm going to step over the line. They're going to hit me on for this hour. <laughs> Yo, that shit is crazy. You got anything else you want to throw out there? Uh, oh, Dirk's album is out. Okay. 
Dirk's on uh, on pace to sell 130,000 first week. This is going to be his biggest debut ever. We've talked about Dirk over the last two years, basically him heating up and his ascension as an artist. He just did 42 placements on Billboard last year, which beat out the whole entire field, regardless mm-hmm. of genre. Um, he uh, is on pace to debut at number one, and he also is now saying that he got $40 million from Alamo and Sony. Uh, I guess to renew his contract because the nigga put an album out every week <laughs> or some form of a project out every other week. So I would imagine that his contract is up, but he's claiming, you know, rappers lie like shit, uh, that he got $40 million from Alamo and Sony um, for renewing his contract with them. And what's the name of this album? It's called 7220. Okay. Grandmom's address. Okay. Yeah. So again, we're not from 63rd still. Okay. 7220. So congrats to Dirk. So they from 77th. 72nd. 72nd. Okay. I, I don't understand. 7220. Oh, I told you you said 7720. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. You want to hear some funny shit? Do you know what 7220 is? What? The first bus I ever had an accident on. <laughs> 7220. <laughs> No bullshit. It was an Arctic, 7220. Now you, got, I, now you got a hashtag 7220. People think you're supporting dirt. I, uh, <laughs> supporting I, the bus you smack. I crashed into a potato chip truck. <laughs> At 22nd in Indiana. Nuts, man. Piss the fuck off. No, it was a herd. <laughs> I thought it was Camaro Ride. R.I.P. Camaro Ride. I fucking hit the truck. And I, I, as I was pulling off, I'm like, I hit it with the back of the bus. I was like, did I just hit the, I just, I just hit that fucking truck. I got off and I looked, I was like, oh shit, I did hit it. The people was like, yo, he dropping chips. Go, go, go. I'm like, man, I ain't fucking leaving the scene, no accident. What the fuck is wrong with you niggas? He, he came out and was like, God damn, I was about to get off. I'm like, hey, my fault, dog. You're going to be here a couple more hours. And it was my first accident. I had just started and the supervisor came out and I'm, I'm nervous. I'm like, fuck, they about to fire me and shit. And I was just like. Damn, I'm a, I'm a dickhead. Like, what the fuck? Like, how the fuck? If the shit was parked, I'm like, I just came in too close and went to pull off and just caught it with the back of the yeah. bus. And I'm like, snapping on myself. I'm like, I know they about to make me go take a piss test, hold me off, all that shit. The supervisor called up, she pulled up Michelle. She a, she a chief now. She cool as fuck. She pulled up. She seen it. She's like, you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm cool. She was like, Did anybody claim an injury? I'm like, no. She was like, all right, um, is the bus operable? I'm like, I ain't no damage really to the bus. Just fucked up the side of the truck or whatever. She was like, all right, cool. Uh, well, write it on when you're done. Um, let me see your schedule. Um, you think you can put pull it back in on your third trip of Men's Landing? I'm like, oh, we can just tear shit up. <laughs> I can just keep on. <laughs> oh, all right. I should have listened to these niggas. Yeah, bro, I should have just. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have jammed myself up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, that's funny as shit. Seventy-two twenty, the first bus I ever got an accident. That's funny. Yeah, I'm gonna play that tomorrow now. <laughs> yeah, me that's too. I don't know. That old niggas. Damn, yeah. damn, vicious lottery. Nigga, ball. Right, right in here. Let me get out. Of here. <laughs> Yo, I'm playing 7220 tomorrow. I'm about to look that up, see when the last time that came out. That's funny as shit. That's hilarious. I didn't but know yeah. it was called 7220. Yeah, I, I don't really got nothing else, man. Um, as usual, you know. Have you we, listen to the album enough? I listen to it. I like it. I think it's um it's a it's a good listen straight through. Um, it's it's 17 songs, but it's only 46 minutes long. Somehow, I don't I don't know how that works. Say that again. It's 17 songs, 17 tracks, but it's 46 minutes in length. So that hmm. breaks down to like two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes a song. Like these young niggas have perfected the two minute and uh seven <laughs> seven second song and making it work. And that shit is perfect with streaming because it makes people go back and like listen to shit. Cause they're like, damn, that's the end of the song. Um my only uh he got some good features on there. He got a join with Summer Walker, he got a join with uh, this country artist Morgan Wyland that's fire. Um he got a song with Future, that's probably my favorite joint on there called Petty Two. Um, and then, you know, the pre-release singles, uh, I, I'm Pissed Off and Aha, good records. The only drawback that I have to this album is that he literally rapped to the same beat 15 times. Okay. Like, he pulled an Icewear Vessel. <laughs> like, he rapped to the same beat, like, 15 times. And it's, like, not even, like, no no hard banging shit. It's, like, these smooth, contemporary listening elevator music kind of beats with like pianos and guitar riffs and shit and I'm just like I don't really particularly understand where Dirk is going with this 7220 has come out 28 times in history and uh, oh, shit, la- I'm playing it tomorrow the too. last time it came out was January 29th of this year yeah. so a little over a month ago last time it came out straight was last time 16? it came out straight was uh, 18 no 16, 16. you're right yeah. Came out straight. Sound 72, like it's about due for me. Seventy-two twenty on December fourth. Which is funny that Dan's over there quiet. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> digging into. Let me dig into the psychology yeah, get, of this. Based in the analytics, but it says seventy-two twenty. <laughs> but yeah, I'm playing that tomorrow. That's funny as shit. 
But yeah, I got nothing else. I got nothing else, man. As usual, we appreciate y'all for listening, for viewing. If you're on YouTube, make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. It'll get you paid. Uh, and it'll get you a hookah kit. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure y'all get y'all tour tickets. Uh, first up, Atlanta. Second tour date is going to be New York City, then Charlotte, then D.C. Then we wrapping up in Wilmington, Delaware with uh, Molly and Nerd from Church for the Wild podcast. Um, all tickets available now, officialtrpe.com. Make sure you are subscribed to the Patreon, patreon.com slash officialtrpe. And follow us on social media everywhere, officialtrpe. Matt makes me sick. And cdiddy.trpe on IG. And Dan is done being big on Instagram, doing it big on Twitter. Yeah. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Get your motherfucking tour tickets. Stop playing games. We out. We out this hoe. Peace.